ever says vast, enormous, huge, full of stars, planets and matter. Some of the matter is so dense that not even light escapes. We call it Dark Matter with Dave Navarro. And it is the beginning of the show, 9 o'clock, Dark Matter. Welcome to it. <clears throat> special Halloween edition. We have a special guest coming in tonight. Cassandra Peterson, a.k.a. Elvira. Very exciting. Yeah, that's a good call. Um, she's coming in in a little while, and I personally am very tired, so as soon as she's done, I'm unfortunately done. So you're going to have to take over, Jess. Me? Yeah. I'm in charge? Yeah. yeah. You're the boss. V- not, vegan Matter with Jess Selleberger. I'm not very good at uh, helming or holding responsibility, I don't think, in life. You're helming. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Just fine. I'm holding court. What's going on with you this week? Oh, How did you react to the the uh, the vote on Judge Kavanaugh? Um, I have to say I wasn't surprised by it, but I was bummed, um, you know, after like we had talked last week and I, I do believe, um, Dr. Ford. And so it just is just a bummer to me that he's the new Supreme Court justice. I I couldn't believe that he got confirmed. Really? Mm -mm. Mm. Once the uh, FBI findings came out, or whenever that that report that they found nothing came out, I figured mm-hmm. he was a shoe in at that point. Yeah, I just thought that so much damage had already been done. You know, like let's just get somebody else in there. I was, was hoping the, for that. That was but... the hope. You know, you got to think there's got to be at least what nine, ten more on the, on the like the short list of people that are qualified. Uh, I right. think there was like thirty on the oh, list. Oh, really? Yeah, <clears throat> I, I think so. It just seems like they wanted this win so bad. That they didn't. The uh, the Republicans don't Franken anything. They don't Al Franken their way out of anything. Like he they stepped take, out. Take responsibility. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But that wasn't going to happen. I kind of knew the whole time. That's what I felt anyway. Have you been following it, Dave? I know you t- kind of took a break from politics for a little <clears throat> while. Well, it's hard not to follow, but uh, I was just surprised. I don't know what I expected to happen. They should have just put up a female Republican judge nominee. Done. Right. You know what? We'll look into this. In the meantime, All right, here's her? somebody else. Yeah. yeah. Am I correct? Is there a, is there a female judge in there? Mm-hmm. There is. Okay. There is. Just one. Uh, Sotomayor is one. I don't know who. Oh no, Ruth. Ruth, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Oh, I, I didn't know she was a justice. Yeah, okay. yeah. Of course I know. You didn't know that Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a justice. I did not. What did you think she was? Just, I, I thought years. maybe she was a senator or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> In those robes? <laughs> I don't watch her shit. I just know her name. Don't laugh at me. You can see her workouts that she does that keeps her so lively and spry. I don't think I want to see that. <laughs> it's not bad. How's the documentary? I know people love that documentary. Oh, I wasn't dying to see it. I haven't seen it yet. Mm. I'm actually looking forward to the new Making a Murderer. Do we know what the case is? No. Same I case. Oh, it's it is? Same case. It's a continuation of the Avery case. Mm. Mm. There's a trailer for it that just came out yesterday. Oh. I haven't seen it yet, but it's a uh, yeah, it's more evidence. He's still in jail, right? I'm so tired of these shows. Are you? It's still going to be inconclusive. At of the course, end of this. it will. Wait, do, we talked about it, but do you think he's guilty? Mm-hmm. I do too. Yeah, so do I. I think he should be free because I think they did plant evidence, but to make sure they got the right guy. If he killed somebody, he shouldn't be free. Period. The Bell. police, the police should have should definitely face their own consequences and have their own punishments Mm -hmm. on their end of things if they did place evidence. But that doesn't give this guy a fucking free pass out of jail card. Mm -hmm. That whole show had me like really guessing whether or not he, I I wasn't like 100%, like he's definitely guilty of something. I definitely was like, there's some strange things going on with the police in this town, but he does seem like a super odd guy. But then to throw the brother that doesn't seem right in the head in jail too. Oh, his nephew. Yeah. Brendan Dassey. Yes, thank you. Yep. I had to stop listening to all the true crime and watching that stuff because I started believing that like I was going to walk my dog at night and someone was going to like kidnap me and like throw me in a car and torture me. And- Just wear your hair up. 
Like this? <laughs> in yeah. a bun. Okay. Yeah, just like that. And then I'll be fine. Nobody will come to you. Uh, but you have a hat. <laughs> You have the bun, but some down. So that's like you're on the fence. It's, I'm kind it's of acceptable. You're not all the way safe. Okay. The mace of the head. <laughs> just, put it, just put it all the way up. And then no one will Walk bother me. Walk the dog. Now you'll be fine. And I can just go back to listening to all the true crime stuff. People will cross to the other side <laughs> away from you <laughs> as you approach. Believe me. They call it the bun run, they call it. <laughs> Is it is it halfway because it's harder to do the the back part? Like you have to put the bobby pins, right? No, this is just like a lazy like I didn't want to put it all the way up. But yeah, that's actually this, easier. This was a do I it's really less? <laughs> it, no, know what that is? It's like it's still a look, but the hair's not in her face. Uh, yeah, basically. So it is a it's a hairstyle. It is, but oh, it's okay. a functional one. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's kind of like a because it's still down, but it's out of her face. Am I correct? You are. You are correct. Exactly. Yeah. It's kind of like a girl, like a fancy, cute mullet. <laughs> <laughs> In a way, I it's kinda, the. Do I really it. care if I get attacked? Ah, I'm too tired. Nah, <laughs> I've got I, mace in my purse. But so I do I'm love like, Camaros. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm into it. I like a T bird. I like it. Yeah, nobody's gonna attack her. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um. So Elvira's coming in. Yes. Very and exciting. then what else is on tap tonight? I'm contemplating what the purpose of life is. Yeah, me too. I've been in that a lot lately. I had that day today where I was like, what is the point? I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to see anybody. I don't want to do anything. Yeah, I've had that for the past week. So when you guys get to the point, like where, where are you at? Like what is it? What conclusion do you come to? Where are you at? It's really hard is what it comes to. I have no conclusion either. Yeah, it's really hard. You still got to do the shit you got to do. I just want to sleep. I just want to crawl under the covers and sleep for like a month. <laughs> this is that bass player that was here with Eric Gales. That guy was awesome. He's unbelievable. Mono, what is his name? Mono Neon. Yeah. I had yeah, no dude. idea. It's got to push through. Yeah, I I've, I figured tomorrow I'm sure will be a lot better, but it's pretty rare that I have these days. But yeah. when I have them, I think does does having animals help? Yes, companion one hundred percent. Do you pinch them really hard <laughs> <laughs> when you're feeling down? No, but I I cuddle the dog, which I'm sure the dog does not like at all. You mean smother? Is yeah, what yeah, exactly. Doing. Lizzie, can you feel my pain? <laughs> There's this stand-up comedian named Eliza Schlesinger. Uh -huh. Do you know who she is? Mm -hmm. she's I've heard the name. She's got like a new special on Netflix right now. But her whole thing is she's like, yeah, we take out our maternal or paternal instincts on animals like when you don't have kids you're like who's the baby and you grab them and you're like your face is in their face and you're kissing them and smothering them and they're like just ptsd like get the fuck away from yeah. me and that's exactly what i do to my dog yeah it's the same thing that parents actually do to their kids right yeah. i'm just getting ready if i ever have kids. i never i never had that them. fuck you up your kids like fuck up their dogs apes don't do that to their their babies probably not or primates don't get the in their face, like crush like, them with hugs. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Like that's the that's the next you know uh, chromosomal closest animal to us, right? And they don't do that, so that's like learned behavior. Yeah, that's socialized behavior. And I'm sure, like a dog's instinct when you get in its face, it wants to bite you. But we've socialized them enough to be like, okay, I guess I'm not gonna bite this person, but. I do it to the dog all the time. Yeah, well, that's that's always important. Um, we're going to take a break right here, and our guest just got back, so we got here. Got here. We're going to take we're going to take a break, and uh, we'll be back. Hey everyone, Corey Taylor here, and you are listening to Dark Matter Radio. All right, we're back. Todd, who was that? That was a little DOA with a cover of Communication Breakdown. The uh, the Led Zeppelin song. Kind of a punk rock take on the old classic there. <clears throat> we are joined in the studio by none other than Cassandra Peterson, a.k.a. Elvira. Mm. Oh, hello. And I'm so happy to be with Cassandra. Oh, thank you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> I'm sure. But so uh, when you're Elvira, how long does that take to put that all together? It's about a two-hour ordeal. Uh, just, wow. And, you know, I've done it so many times, it's kind of like being in a... Like a coma, struggling it on. Is it almost meditational process, or is it still no. frantic? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, I wish it was meditational. It's kind of like, oh, I have another wrinkle that I didn't used to have, and I can't get my eyeliner over it. What year 
What year did you start Elvira? 1981. 81. Okay. Long time before wow. you were born. Uh, yeah. no, no, no. I remember. I remember. <laughs> that's my first introduction as to what, you know, how you can combine sexuality and darkness oh. and have something totally unique was watching you growing wow. up. Sounds like I helped you through puberty. <laughs> well, no, but I'm serious. Like, there is a really interesting correlation there that there's something dark and something sexy. They're both somewhat. Whoa. taboo issues and then they get crossed in a weird way and yeah. then to a young child that's you know there's a weird uh hybrid that i think is responsible for you know a, opening a dimension and a doorway and an imagination in kids all across the world yeah look imagine. how you turned out i'd say pretty good <laughs> and it's hot <laughs> i say too. good i'd say pretty good you know i say damn good so in the amount and so since 81 and it's 2018 Ugh, are you sure if you had to make an estimation of how many times you had to put on the regalia <laughs> i yeah. mean is that countless is it just like this immeasurable amount of time yeah Im immeasurable amounts of time um i did my show starting in hollywood well once a week for three years then once a week for seven years and then and in between that i was putting it on because I was doing different shows and appearances. or appearances and stuff. And then, you know, on and on. I mean, I mean, average once a week. Okay, 52 times, how many years? 37 years. <laughs> I mean, we could figure it out, but that's, yeah, that's, okay. just, that's incredible. Calculator? Do you do your own makeup or do you, did you or edit, do you prefer to have it done? I do my own makeup yeah. always only because I keep trying to get my makeup artists to do it. Mm -hmm. And they do a fantastic job. They do a better job than I do. But it ends up looking different. Yeah. It's not like Elvira, you know. Um, my my friend Robert Redding devised the makeup out of a kabuki makeup book that he had. That's and he cool. used it on himself when he was in uh, Macbeth playing the witch Hecate. And he said, this makeup will look great on you. He did the makeup on me for um, a couple of years until yeah. he passed away sorry, from yeah. AIDS okay and he taught me how to do it you know when he was sick he yeah. said this is how you gotta do it this is how it's gonna be don't change it yeah and I never did and wow that's why I do it myself so that's a bummer I wish I could just lay in a chair and have somebody else do it I would That'd think be so that you, awesome. it's interesting it's like you say that and then I've had a team of different makeup artists throughout the years and no two of them can do the same thing no, no, that's mm. the problem. You know that's I mean? the problem, and it's not that relaxing when you're laying there and they're doing it either, is it? Because you're going. Yeah. It's someone what new. Look like when I'm done, and they're touching you, and you don't know yeah. them, and they're talking, and like I'd rather just yeah, I'm with you. I know, yeah. So, so there when, you go. It's so like if you want something done right, do it yourself. Well, when there's rock shows, I wear I wear a lot of makeup, and so that'll I bet. I'll do it myself because I used to have someone do it. You don't need makeup. I do from on on. Yeah, on stage, do. Yeah. on stage from far yeah, away, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You also don't know because you need to because you want to. It's also like part of your stage vibe. You're not covering things up. You're making yourself kind of look cool sometimes. Yeah, I guess. You know I, I mean? guess. I guess. Yeah, I'm just trying to. I'm trying to take a part of my own personality which exists and amplify. Amplify it. Yeah. exactly. I mean, if you're on stage and you have no makeup, you would yeah. just look like a washed out. You know. Yeah. So I just want to take because that part of me is is there's that's a very real part of me. And yeah. then when it's time to work, I just turn it up to ten. Is there exactly. is, is is that character just completely a part of you, and it's a similar thing, oh, or yeah. do you just are you ever conscious of Cassandra as Elvira? No, <laughs> really, <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Like, does Elvira, Elvira ever worry about Cassandra's electrical bill? Elvira has no worries. You know what I mean. Whatsoever. She doesn't worry about anything. I wish I was her all I the God, time. I know. I wish I was the guy that I portray. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. And you could just be that guy oh, yeah, and not think me. about all the other crap that goes along with it. I'm totally into no. that. No, Cassandra thinks about Elvira all the time. Yeah, about how she mm -hmm. should be. What should happen? Blah, 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 blah. But Elvira has no worries. But you have the other beautiful thing, which is, you know, really a blessing. I think. In this day and age, especially living in in LA where we live, um, being anonymous, right? Being anonymous, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody like you and any other celebrity I've ever met, mm -hmm. I know how it is. I hang out with them. Yeah. I see what happens. Uh, you know, I've walked around. I've had dinner with. It's a freaking nightmare. Yeah. People don't get it, and I 
am maybe one of the only a handful. Of, maybe there's only two of us, me and Pee Wee. I don't know who can go around do our grocery shopping. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, yeah. do everything, and nobody knows, nobody cares, nobody says anything. I mean, it's miraculous, really. It's whew, I can't tell you how lucky I am. But I would imagine enough people at this time, mm-hmm. like every once in a while, someone's going to go. It's good, Cassandra. They do, but, they do. You know, once but, in a while, usually, especially when I like have no makeup on and don't mm-hmm. wash my hair and I look like hell, they'll go, "Oh my God, you're hilarious!" And you want to take a picture. And, you know, normally I would, but you know that thing is going to be on social media. Yeah. And you're going to see it everywhere. They're going to go, oh, my God, look at the... Look I know, it's really, changed, so it's really changed everything. Like, yeah, this, the advent yeah. of the cell phones, and it's like you're in the supermarket, or you're coming out yep. of the gym, and someone's yep. wants a picture, yep. and you don't want to say no, but I, I just came out of the gym. Like, you know what I, I mean? Know. And it's not I, like that's not going into your personal photo album at home. It's going to go out to the world. Everywhere. That's exactly it. And I even tell fans, they go... I just don't, you know, have any makeup on today or anything. And I, you know, if you take a picture of me, I know it's going to get out in there. No, no, no. I go, I just can't take a chance. I'm so sorry. But I can't get away with there's no makeup on me and I can't, you know what I mean? No, that would be really creepy. It would be creepy. (laughs) It would be creepy. So since, so you got started in 81, there's a lot of magical entertainment moments that took place in the 80s and 90s. There I, were and I feel music. Like, I think was at its peak since the '60s. I, I feel, mean, I agree, and I feel that I feel that in this landscape, the modern day landscape, there's just so much information that's happening. There's so much. There's so many options for content. How do you view the entertainment accessibility now versus the '80s? Did you do you miss those mm-hmm. old days? Oh, I totally miss. I do too. Those old days. I mean, I do too. I mean, if we're just talking about music, well, we're just talking about the entertainment business. Entertainment in business. No, it was much more. I don't know. <laughs> I was, don't know what the word is. It was there so, was a mystique around it that there it doesn't seem to have anymore. Yeah, not anymore. I don't, and I wouldn't really know how to put that into words. But it was so exciting and happening and everything in the eighties. You know, I don't think that's going to come back. Mm-mm. I don't think that no matter how talented people are and there yeah. are some insanely talented it's people out there they it's just not going to be as raw and live as yeah. it was then and i gotta say in the 60s it was even more so of that so okay. uh i mean uh, from here to the 80s is the same as from the 80s to the 60s right i understand that 60s was you know, oh my, it was could brand you, new. Could was, you imagine? Oh. <clears throat> could you imagine if there was social media in the sixties? <laughs> God, oh, I'd be in so much trouble. So everybody would be in jail. The world I would be, be over grounded. By everybody yeah. would be in jail. There'd be no politicians whatsoever. <laughs> um, I mean, it's just—it's absolutely insane. Now, but one thing, you know, the, the crazy thing in the sixties, I was about bands and stuff because I was a big groupie. But uh-huh. you know, you could go running around and go in bands, dressing rooms, and and you know, there was. They were pretty polite, you know. Yeah. You didn't want to do anything, and you said no. Yeah. No, man, no. Yeah. It was like fine. Yeah. Every, no, I don't know. You know, I don't think that's happening anymore. But it, it was pretty innocent. Yeah. Believe it or not, there were tons of drugs. Mm-hmm. There were tons of sex things going on, but it was like all kind of consensual, oh, and yeah. happy, and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody was fine with it, or they were not fine with it. And, right. Anyway, oh, I'm going it's off not into until, it's not until, another world. It's not until years later that someone decides that they've been traumatized by it that they will go, you know what, that thing that I had a really good time doing 15 years ago, now I'm thinking it's traumatizing. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of fun you know things. What I mean? uh, I'm not now traumatized by a, those. Now I think I have a case. <laughs> it's really weird. I, I, I had a lot of things going on in the, in the 60s with like, Oh, Jimmy Page, really? Jimi Hendrix, all, all these people. And I, I I was not traumatized by it. And yeah. I was a virgin uh-huh. still. And, uh, you know, and then, but then I have things later on, more like in the mm, end of the 80s, 90s, that, that were traumatizing. That oh, were, really? Were good at yeah. All. Yeah. So there's a distinct difference. And I could and name you know names, the, but then they might go to jail. Yeah. And you know the difference. Yeah. So, so you have obviously must have just you know years and years i remember uh, my ex-wife carmen Electra telling me stories about stuff that takes place on sets and, and oh. 
trailers and all that stuff. Oh, and, I, I bet. Oh, and she was just like, "Get the fuck out of here!" You yeah. know what I mean? Like there was no, no meant no, and she was not fucking around. Yeah. And, and no, I I could trade stories with her. I yeah. bet we're in the same boat. She yeah. and I. Yeah. I mean, she's super sexy. She's you know I'm not yeah. as good looking as her. She's super hot. But, and she's really happening right now, isn't she? She's doing all she's kinds doing of all great kinds things. She's doing all kinds of stuff, yeah. yeah she's killing her. it. She's killing it. Uh, and I met her. She came out to see my show at Knott's. She was very, very... She did? Yep, yep, yep. Very sweet. Did you meet her at my house ever? Nope. Never over there. She was over there a couple of times. I think earlier in the day. When I'm you came, when you guys came later in the day, she was there earlier. Oh, no, no, yeah. I missed her over there. She came out to Knott's and... Super and Todd and I came out and saw you at Not That's Scary. You did. Yeah, that I remember great. that. That yeah. was a fun night. Now, it let was. me ask you this. Why have you stopped doing Not Scary Farm? Here we are in October. Oh. Are you just happy? Like, is this the best October you've had in 20 years? It might be. <laughs> it really might be. I mean, come on. I did Knots for 21 years. It's yeah. just at a certain point you got to say, I should do something else at Halloween. I don't know. Maybe the East Coast wants to see me for a change. Are you doing something know. else this year? I'm doing all these giant horror venues and right. horror conventions and horror mm-hmm. shows and um, almost all on the East Coast. That's just, kind of amazing. just came back from New York, Philadelphia, New Jersey, blah, blah, I don't know, everything yeah. on the East Coast. I'm going back next week. But it's nice to get out of Southern California. I mean, I love it here. And Knott's really is the biggest venue for horror in, oh, the, yeah. in the world. And well, Universal, there, Universal yeah. too. Is, They're they not do, as big as Knots. But they don't. Do, don't they put on a good horror night thing there? It's I don't going think it's downhill. as good as Knots. I don't think it is going downhill. It was better. I went out to it one year. It is sorry, yep. sorry Universal, but Knots has the edge because they've been doing it yeah. for like thirty something years. I was just gonna say the the phrase "Not Scary Farm" is like in the lexicon as the premier place it is yeah. i mean people come from all over the world they get fans there also from, from japan that Spain, neighborhood China. it's crazy the neighborhood where knots is is scary in march it is <laughs> it's scary i think it's scary all year think around think about it in october you know anything <laughs> yeah, what happens not, in not scary neighbors oh yeah no i call it way in park day yeah, i don't go down there unless i'm packing yeah exactly <laughs> packing heat <laughs> so so you must have been at one of your um, conventions or doing something out of state, and you had you know someone stays at your house. Yes. And if people don't know this, we live next door to each other. That's right. I love my neighbor's music. That's the and best that thing the, about that was you. The best thing I get, I get a text, <laughs> and I have you in my phone as Elvira. Oh, I don't nice. Because it just it's, it's just it looks cooler when it comes up. Well, you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna <laughs> join you're gonna join the club that Pee Wee and I are in because With, I have it, it's. Uh, to Pee Wee, I'm Elvira, and to Elvira, I mean, to him, I'm whatever. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 but yeah. anyway, yeah, we just go by those names. I don't have an alter names. ego that you can put me in. I know. At, I wish I could call you something other than Dave. <laughs> well, you can, but uh, okay. it wouldn't be considered an alter <laughs> ego. Anyway, uh, it's just. Uh, anyway, I love my neighbor's music. That's so yeah, awesome. I, I hear you like blasting me. Yeah, you said to me, Am I playing music loud? And I go, No, I, I mean. No, but you texted me once from like another country. Oh, and yeah, said, probably. I don't know where, I don't know if you know this, but you have heavy metal music blaring out of the front yard. Oh, yeah. My, my uh, niece was over there and said, you know, I love Dave, but you better tell him that his music is blaring into the front yard and out into the street. <laughs> I'm one and of the I few, don't know if he's aware. I'm she said, of, I'm fine with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm one of the few people who actually has speakers facing the street <laughs> Good <laughs> in idea. my house. Good idea. And it, was, it happened to be Burzum. At the time. Oh. You don't say. Which was really a good call. I, I got to <laughs> tell you that the day you moved in that house was my dream come true because I was just afraid I was going to get some awful yeah. neighbors that yeah. hated hearing music or seeing me coming and going with my outfit well, on. <laughs> but, but isn't there I was a, like, is, oh, Dave. Isn't there a lot of coming and going at my house? Like, don't we annoy you guys? Oh, yeah. We but do? No, no, you don't annoy me. <laughs> oh, yeah, you annoy me. All the- no, you do not annoy me at all. Okay, good. Back no, let's see. Is there one time you've annoyed me? There was no? one time when my, no? my side gate was slamming against... Oh, well, that. Uh, okay, that was annoying. <laughs> you were out of town and your side gate was... It was windy and that gate was just crashing and crashing all night <laughs> long. I get a wake up. I'm on a date and I'm in New York and I get a text from like Mistress of the Universe. Can you or whatever shut the hell it is. damn gate? <laughs> <laughs> the text of fucking gate is banging. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm in New York, so I had, I had someone go fix it. But 
Yeah, and that was that's so, the only time. But that wasn't a lifestyle of mine that annoyed you. That was just ha- no. that was happenstance. Could have been anybody. All the banging going over to out of your house. Could have been anybody. anybody. That was the only time it annoyed me. <laughs> so this year you're going to be at different places. So, but you've been around the entertainment industry <coughs> for so long that you must have worked know, with so, so many long. of the of the great. Like, did you ever do a love boat? Or a fantasy island. <laughs> fantasy island. You did a fantasy I island. I did. It was so funny. It was before I was Elvira, and I was what they got. Yeah, they gave me this part, and it was. Oh, so you didn't appear long. as a Elvira? No. Oh, okay. It was as myself. Um, so I got this part, and it was so. Um, I was apparently so bad that they made me uh, into a deaf mute. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad, right? When well, it's um, better than going in another direction. <laughs> yeah. You know well, what I mean? Yeah. They made the part your direction. That might have been some other guy's fantasies, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, what about like a Scooby-Doo? That's why they call it fantasy. I like. <laughs> yeah. were, you, were you ever in Scooby-Doo? I, I, I was. Perfect. I am in Scooby-Doo now. I have a part on Scooby-Doo. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. I, I'm like a voice actor. Oh, that's, a, that's nice. I yeah. love that. But the, the, the fantasy island... <laughs> Is the exciting one. Mm-hmm. I know. I was with Hervé Villachez. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that was really exciting, let me tell you. But I'll tell you, though. He was that, a little perv. That was oh, the, that's, that's what we've can heard. You, can yeah. you hear about that? I want to hear about that. <clears throat> oh, he was just. You know, he was a very little perv. <laughs> a very little perv. He's just the right size to be looking up your dress all the time. Yeah. Oh, man. I, w- I wish I was short. I heard that. Um, <laughs> Todd knows what you're talking I'm about. I'm so happy a viper is on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was it. I, that, that was good. But I also heard that. Um, Vern Troyer was like that, and I think that. Uh oh, yeah. You when, know, when you're that when small, you, you got to make small, up for it's it. Like, and like, and women baby you mm-hmm. anyway at that mm-hmm. size, and so they could just kind of follow the lead, <laughs> pick you, know you up, oh, and put you in their doing? bosom. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's I, like, yeah, oh, I had you, a, don't you just so an cute. adorable <laughs> little man? I had a uh, Irve on my show later, and and uh, uh, we had him trick or treating, and he came to my door, and I was Elvira, and I go, I uh, oh. Hi, Irve, you're trick or treating. Would you like M and M's? And I go, which would you like, the plain or the peanut? And he goes, the plain, Elvira, the plain. Oh anyway, my god! Okay. Sorry. Wait, that's the that's the <laughs> greatest that's thing I've ever heard in my life. The plain, the plain. <laughs> the worst part was we we tell him when he rang the doorbell, he had to say trick or treat. Uh huh. So he rings the doorbell and he goes, trick or treat, trick or treat. And we go. <clears throat> Trick or treat. He's French, trick right? Is that a French? Yeah, I guess. Accent? And then yeah. he goes, Oh, yeah, yes, yes, I know, I know. Trick or treat, please, trick or treat. You couldn't tell what the hell he was saying at the yeah. door. It was, and then uh, it was challenging. The whole yeah. <laughs> what do you make of the people who go through the trash outside of our, our houses? Oh, I love them. I, there's a you lady do? who I love who I actually go out and I sort all the cans and you bottles give her stuff for her. And I give it to her. She's adorable. She's so nice. I like it. Do you ever worry about putting any sensitive materials in oh, the trash? Oh, well. <laughs> uh, not as much as you, apparently. Well, no, I'm just saying, like, you know, people, what if they came across some tax records and, like, I don't know, there's, there could be something. I shred it shred all. all I that shred all I yeah. shred all the, all the, all the good stuff is shredded. I sh- let me say this. I shred condoms. <laughs> wow. I'm not fucking around. I don't have that problem at my house. But. Right, when I get done using them, I have a shredder right by the ah, door. What do you want to do now? <laughs> oh, your shredder has got to be uh, really gonna, yeah. screwed up. You gotta buy yeah. one every six months, but what oh, the hell? Good, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny shit. Oh, Dave, that's way more information than I want. And that's the kind of show you chose to come on. You're right. I what forgot. Is, so, what is next for you? You have a whole line of stuff. You mean you're selling merch? You're selling books? I mean, what's going on? Tell people where they can get all this stuff. Too. Oh my God, Elvira.com. It's that simple. Yeah, it's that simple. Elvira.com. It's so easy to remember and type with one hand. Um. <laughs> Anyway, but it, uh, yeah, I have tons of stuff coming out right now. My <clears throat> my book, which you know about, which mm-hmm. I gave you. I think you have everything. I have it. My little Funko Elvira figure. Are you a Funko figure? Because uh, you no, should be. No, but I don't want to be with anything like oh, that. Oh, no, you should be. No, because I, no. I, because sometimes they will accentuate things that are your worst fears, <laughs> and I don't want to see how the people view me. You would look short and oh, wide. I don't know. Oh, oh no. I'm short and wide. It, it's well, a Funko the figure. Fun, pull up the Funko Elvira figure, and let's take a look at this thing. I have five of them. Wow. Yeah, that's super awesome. But um, I don't know what all things I have. But is this is this my the same thing as my ornament that I got for Christmas? Oh, your Christmas ornament? No, no, it's different than that. Right, I have a new a new ornament this year, Dave, for you. All right, but if you have something like this, oh yeah, these little bobblehead things. Oh yeah, my newest thing is my cereal. 
Oh my god! Elvira cereal. What is the flavor? What do we got? It's black, and when you pour milk in it, the milk becomes black, and later, if you eat a lot of it, you get colon yeah. cancer. Everything becomes black. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Look at this. Now you don't mind this bobblehead thing? I love it. Funko figures all look like that. Dave, you must have one of these. But are you okay with having them accentuate? All I those? love it. Funko Pop. Yeah, these are yeah, huge. Yeah, but they all have the same size heads. Like, and they, they, there's tons of them. These are huge. My kids actually collect them. She's obviously a, a very secure. No, I know. You know. Yeah, yeah, of course she is. Yeah, yeah but the yeah. body isn't. Yeah, no, look up look up my I'm cereal. Saying the body isn't huge and that's no, the what body is about. Uh, uh, yeah, no, you'll look fine, Dave. I mean, there's all kinds of Dave. No, there's Alice being, Cooper, there's Rob funny. Zombie, there's I know, I'm yeah, my kids collect them. Actually. I'm trying yeah. to be and they keep them They're in like the, box. the new beanie yeah. babies yeah. kind of. They're so it. awesome. Oh, here's the cereal with the Funko character on the front. Yes, there's a game in the back and a little a, a which, toy which inside. Which leads one to believe they had the concept all ready to go. Here's the Here's the Funko head. Here's Elvira. Here's the product. Now, all we need is a cereal formula. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to do? I don't know. Throw some sugar in it. Make it black. Shoot some <laughs> black dye in there. And make the milk black. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, you know, uh, you, you know, believe it or not, it's uh, real real sugar in it. I'm not saying it's healthy, but yeah. they use real sugar. They don't use the fake the one, which I, stuff, which I yeah. appreciate. Mm-hmm. The right. fake ones, the fake ones give you cancer, and these yeah. real ones well, give I mean, get you fat. Did you did you like eat? You know, when you were little, it was like cereal, like tricks, and mm-hmm. I wasn't allowed to have any of that Cocoa stuff. Cocoa pops, no, and stuff. no, no. That's part of the one of the reasons why I feel like I don't fit in anywhere. Goes back to my <laughs> parents' upbringing of making me eat wow. healthy stuff, Seriously? and then I felt like I wasn't part of everything in my school. Oh. Oh. No wonder you're a hippie. Would you would you go to like a friend's house and have like junk food at night? And it would be just like the heavens, you know. I mean, just go down and open a friend's refrigerator and like have more options than whole raw lecithin. Yeah, I was that, like, oh, that's what happened. See, there was a little girl across the street uh, when my daughter was little, and her parents were vegan, and they only made her eat healthy stuff. And when she come over, my daughter would go. Danielle ate her entire bowl of you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tootsie Rolls or whatever they were there. Yeah. I go, entire bowl? It was, you know, as big as a salad bowl. Yeah. So she would, you know, leave home and get really crazy. Oh, yeah, that's where drug addiction starts. There you go. <laughs> I go over to, I, used to, I used to be friend with uh, Bob Newhart's kids. Ooh. We went to school together and uh, I would sleep over at their house all the time. Mm, you're kidding. Uh-uh, and I, my, my biggest thing was to sneak down to the pantry when the kids went to bed <laughs> and like, they had the ding dongs and the, the <laughs> Twinkies and all any, oh, anything yeah. that crinkles and crackles with the wrapper. <laughs> when oh when it God. makes that sound, it's probably not good for you, right? That probably <laughs> not. Nothing yeah. that comes like that is really all that good for you. So salad doesn't come wrapped in cellophane. Exactly. No. So I opened it up and it, I was just just heaven. And then interesting story. When I was maybe seven years old, and the New Hearts had a cat. And I, I was allergic to cats. I can't believe you're a Bob Newhart's up, first of all. That's so insane. Well, I love of, Bob so Newhart so here's, much. Here's the best. So I think I'm allergic to a cat, and I'm getting, my, my eyes are itching and, and, and watering, <laughs> and I'm chewing gum, and for some reason I'm like, I got to keep this eye closed, or I'm going to keep scratching it. So I take the gum, I'm seven years old. I take the gum, and I close <laughs> no, my eye. Not. Close my <laughs> no. eyes shut with it, right? <laughs> So I can't, so I can't scratch it. Oh my god! And then cut to two hours later, me and Bob sitting at the kitchen table, trying to get and the he's gum. He's getting the gum out of my eye, I'll pulling all your it. eyelashes yeah. out, right? No, he was very delicate. Oh with my me. god! Oh my god! That's, that's such a story. great. Really, who has you know? I have been lucky enough to hear that story. Bob <laughs> Newhart pulling gum out of their eyelashes. Yeah, when they were child. in his wow. robe, in his like, and it was exactly oh. what you would picture. I mean, it was like he had. Yeah, he was just being Bob Newhart. Right? Yeah, pajamas like silk pajamas and a silk robe <laughs> by the same designer. Oh you know, the god. whole thing it was all tailored. Oh my god, it was amazing. Was he super nice? I hope so. Oh, he- yes. <laughs> He is the best. Good. All right, we got it. That's good. So this cereal is out now? Yes. Because I want. here's what I want. Hot Topic. Okay, here's what I want to ask you. Where do I get... A, hot Topic. <laughs> anything Elvira's Hot Topic? I no, get, no, just the cereal. I want to get like a 12-inch 
like realistic. Oh, they must have those. Yeah, like a realistic Elvira figure. Like figure. Well, I have like a one for you. Scale, the core scale or whatever Elvira's. Yeah. Yeah. Come, come to my house. You have them? I have one for you. Yeah. You know how to get there. But you, you want the cereal, bro. Absolutely. Or do you want the one? I have the Christmas one or I have the twirling tassels one that just came out i that would objectify you and i can't uh, i can't endorse that <laughs> i can though I'll they take all it. objectify me <laughs> <laughs> no you just knock on the door i have one for you dave okay, I, think this is I collect all that weird stuff as you know yeah. like, oh my god no, this would look fantastic you sure you on your that? mantelpiece oh, I'll, take, I'll take the spinning uh, the tassel one that's is, good is, is that the tassel one <laughs> yes, i think it is i think oh so god that's awesome you can have <laughs> now it. i think dave should have a statue but just the same body with your head on this one then now you're talking oh that'd be fantastic <laughs> Dude, let's do a mashup. <laughs> oh my god! I gave one to Jack White, and he accidentally knocked oh, it off the thing okay. and then knocked the head off. But this he doesn't one, mind. He said, "I think this is the one, though. This is oh, okay. the traditional, Tra- straight traditional. up." Okay, non- I got it. That's the one. That's the classic. And I don't want any of. Uh, I don't want any of that uh, objectification. Yeah, yeah. No, you wouldn't want that sexy stuff. That's gross. No, do Icky, <laughs> gross, gross. Here's a question: Do you know Angeline? I do very well yeah. since 1981. Not bad. <clears throat> yeah, yeah a strange one that one. Yeah, I had her up to the quite house. a character. I quite to, a character. I had her up to my house. Oh boy. years ago. Yikes! Not yeah. this house. No, 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 no. Like, yeah. like uh, almost 20 years ago. Yeah. And uh, boy, she was interesting. Yeah, you know, here's the thing. She's a sweet person. So sweet. But. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are leaving some stuff out here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, but she's not a bat. She doesn't no. mean. Yeah, she's. I think that she's a, like she's not malicious. No, she's no, not malicious. No, no. She's like from another dimension. Yeah, she is. What she, she, saying. <clears throat> what she needs is a I, cereal. I went out. Angeline I went cereal. out once to the palace nightclub. Do you remember when the palace mm-hmm. was the palace? Of course. And I went out one night with Angeline and Nina Hagen. Oh my you know, god! Nina. So the three what of you, a as, night. the three of you as yourselves. Yeah. Oh my god. Whew. I, I can't even begin to tell you. I can't. I, I would love to hear. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. And we ran into Rodney Bingenheimer. I remember because we took a picture with him. I yeah. That, those are the days, man. Those are the days, so dude. You, We're you, talking about the old no, days. No, but you. So you got an island under the belt, but you didn't get a boat. No, never got a boat. Boat was the way to go. Yeah, no, never Gotta got get that. a boat. <laughs> Too late. What were you hung up on? A love boat. Well, that was Saturday nights. That was it. Was love boat then Fantasy Island? Mm-hmm. At my age, that was exactly all I did. I was on Happy Days. Does that count? It counts in a huge way. Yeah, hundred percent. I was the I, the only person on Happy Days that played a stripper. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> and Richie fell in love with me and took me home to his mom and dad. And, and you weren't good. you weren't Elvira in that either? No, it was way before Elvira. Oh, I gotta see that because uh, I'm sure I've seen it because I've seen them all, but I, I'm gonna watch yeah. it for that reason. Well, I was a stripper. The Todd and I are big fans of the show Taxi. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. And there's a there's an episode where a little girl shows up in it as a Girl Scout. As yes. a Girl Scout, <clears throat> and um, we've known the episode for years and years and we've years. We've quoted it <clears throat> many times over the years. That exact scene. Yeah, like it's just a scene that we oh. love, and it turns out <laughs> that 20 years later, like I I dated that little girl. No, for like a year. <laughs> Because this is crazy. After Wait, she left, she the never Girl mentioned Scouts. dated her for like a year before we knew before that we she knew. was the girl of the yeah. line. Yeah, that that's crazy. And she said, "I did a taxi once." I was like, yeah. "Really? I never saw it." And she's a Girl Scout one. I'm like, "What?" <laughs> and I called them, and they were oh like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> and then we we feel like that was my greatest accomplishment. A hundred percent was. <laughs> kind of, perky. and you'll never top it. I say, I'll never be able to top that. <laughs> so well, I don't know. You might, Dave. <laughs> are you in town? Never now? say never. Are you in town for this month? Are you taking it easy? No. Or are you doing no, ton of stuff. traveling, traveling. I'm in town till Tuesday, and then I go back out to do some conventions, and I come back for two days, and then I go back out for two weeks. Would you rather do this? Yes. Like, were you doing traveling little bouts, then yes. have every night, like, the yes. the drive and the dancing? Because that must be exhausting. Is what it's I'm exhausting. Reading. Yeah. I mean, you know. I yeah. mean, but, you know, uh, six weeks, two shows a night, and the worst part, honest to God, is driving to freaking oh, yeah. Buena Park at five o'clock, and then <clears throat> I, I leave at five, get my makeup on at seven, do my show at nine, do another show at eleven thirty, get my makeup off, come home, and get to bed at three oh. every night. Oh my god! In a row. I mean, until I'm just like, bleh, you know, can't see. God, they they gotta be paying you hundreds. 
Huh? <laughs> hundreds of dollars. Well, yeah, hundreds of dollars. It is. <clears throat> well, not enough, apparently. I'm not there. What time is it now, Todd? It is 9.43. Okay, cool. Can we go to a song, and we'll be back, and we'll say goodbye, and uh, we'll roll out of here. Okay. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Mark McGrath, and you are listening to Dark Matter Radio. Todd, what was that? That was a drug boy by the band Filter. Interesting. Yeah, good right. song. Is it? Mm-hmm. I've never heard of it before. <laughs> no, I, I didn't hear it really now. I was just like, I'd never heard it before. Yes. Anyway, so, Cassandra, thank you for being here. You're welcome. It was fun. Yeah, it was, it was just really like good to be here. Chatting over the backyard fence. I know. It's really exciting. Now, do you guys, I hear you sometimes rustling a lot rustling around on the other side of the fence. Do you ever hear me on the phone and stuff? Oh, yeah, we do. Oh. Sometimes. <laughs> well, well, go ahead. Go ahead. No, sometimes I almost want to yell, Dave, Dave, I can hear everything you're saying. I wish you would. Okay. <laughs> well, okay, next time I might. I mean, do you guys ever hear me urinating in my own grass? Uh, no, thank God. Yeah, that's not okay. That, that, God, I, okay. Of course we haven't, because I, I would never do something like that. I, I, and anyway, it's fake grass, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, there you go. See, Good I Good memory. Fake thank grass. You. See that, guys? Being conscientious. Yeah, it was like that when you moved in. I bought a house with fake grass. <laughs> yeah. I like the fake grass. I think it's a brilliant idea. You see, I took all the grass out of my place and put, like, you know. Well, you don't have to spend the money on the desert water. Desert plants. You don't, have to, you don't have to deplete the, uh, exactly. the water. It's and I have cautious. solar panels on my house. You, you see do? that? Yeah, don't you see it from your window? I don't want to look down at your house. That's creepy. Don't? Oh, thank God. He just cause... flies a drone over in the windows. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of creepy, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Looking down at your house? What? what? I wonder if I can see in Elvira's window. Oh, yeah, yeah, your bamboo's going to mess up my solar, my assistant said. Oh, you want me to cut that down? Well, you might have to make it like the height of the little bit more above the fence. I want to talk about it. It's getting about three stories high now. Well, perhaps we can talk to my lawyer about that. Are you guys feuding right now? This is a feud. Call my lawyer. Oh, this is great. My lawyer's going to have a look at the property My lawyer will call your lawyer next week. If you look here in 1922, it clearly states the property line runs along... The basin of this house Dave, is my property. Dave. We're going to get into a legal trouble. I love mm-hmm. it. Oh, that's a fact. I, yeah. I can't wait to sue Elvira. I got more than... Oh, you and everybody else. I Mistress got, of the court. Dude, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have not only that 12-inch action figure and books and those little big head things. You'll have her home. I'm going to have her home. That's going to be where you're going to keep them all. I was sued by Vampira, so you're in good company, remember? Yeah, but she she lost, like, immediately, right? I know, and so will you. What was this? Oh, (laughs) shit. She, did well, you see the look in her shut eye? You down. No, right. I wouldn't go forward with this, Dave. Oh my God! I don't that's, think those, you are, those are fighting. For, I'll, I'll catch an Uber home. Okay. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> that was some Goodfellas stuff right there. Hope you guys like Burzum tonight. <laughs> if, you, if your tires are flat tomorrow, Dave, <laughs> that's okay. I'm the one who's got uh, speakers on the outside of his house. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Elvira.com is where they can get everything. Everything. And then all your dates and appearances and all that stuff. Yes, they're all there, all there. More than you ever want to know about me. We do have a phone call for you. We, you do? We uh-oh, take it. uh-oh. It's Dave's lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hey, hey, you're on the air with, the, uh, with Elvira. Hi, this is Vaughn. Hi, Hi Vaughn. Vaughn. Hi. I just it's Elvira. 21. Hi, Elvira. Hi. What's happening? Um, I wanted to mention the first time I ever saw you, I, like I said, I'm 21, and I first saw you as Queen Sarai in Alan Quartermain in the Lost Oh, Temple. my God. It, that, you must have been three years old or something. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> It was like on this VHS that my aunt... Oh, okay, you don't have to start being mean. Oh, my God. <laughs> I never touched a VHS before. Yeah. You don't have to be mean about I was, it. I was with Richard Chamberlain and Sharon Stone. Yeah. Those were the, my wow. co-stars. Yeah, I saw it on three-quarter inch. <laughs> Vaughn trolling our guests. Oh, my yeah, God. I saw it on an eight-track no, tape. I didn't mean to. No, that's oh okay. That's okay. That's crazy because you're probably one of three people that saw that movie. Wait, Vaughn, <laughs> how old are you, Vaughn? 21. 21. And you operated a VHS? And I play records. That's really weird. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a hipster? Thank you. Yeah, you're a hipster. You're in the cassettes too now? That's like the new thing they're doing. The only cassette I have is yours, Dave. 
Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, that was a slam. <laughs> How was that a slam? Man? Oh, it's beautiful. Dave's lawyer is going to be calling you. For what? The only cassette she has is mine? Good for her. <laughs> it's a slam to every other artist is what that was. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Good <laughs> one. Good one, girlfriend. She's on my side. Yeah, he on my side. Did you have a question for uh, Elvira? Uh, yes. You guys kind of touched on it at the beginning, but I wanted to ask, what have been the strangest things seeing how your job became this huge cultural icon? What's, and what's the strangest things that... I guess what's the strangest thing that has happened to you as a result of this, as a result of becoming this icon? Hmm. I would say being oh, a guest boy. on Dark Matter. Yeah, that could be <laughs> it. Yeah, I don't know what the strangest thing was. I know. There's plenty of strange things. I would, so if that. someone asked me what the strangest thing uh -oh. was, I wouldn't know what to say either. Maybe living next door to Dave Navarro? That's I don't know. so cliche and oh, obvious. Oh, okay, okay. It is, actually. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, that's just a cliche, obvious, like you would expect Every uh, Everybody lives next door to Dave Navarro. No, so no. Pe the world would expect us to live next to each other. They would expect you to le live next door to Manson. Okay, they would expect well, you to live true. next door to me. They would expect any oh, some creepy dude. Um, okay. You guys would be a great reality I used to, show. I used to live next door to Brad Pitt. Ah, that's a move that I can't believe you were, you were entertained. Why'd you I move know. away from him? Because I sold him my house and I moved next door. He was oh. too handsy. She had to get away from him. Yeah, I had to get away. He was, he was all over me. I couldn't, couldn't Brad's 3 a.m. Come on, dude. Yeah, yeah, I know. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> I was his trainer for a couple of years. <laughs> what? <laughs> All, right. All right, Vaughn, anything else? I have one last thing. Oh, I'm my sure God. I've already thought about it. Oh, I know. I'm so sorry. Oh, my <laughs> <It's> God. <okay. laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that tonight, not only is she mistress of the dark, she's mistress of the dark matter. <gasps> exactly. Oh. Good point. Thank you, Vaughn. I knew you there was a reason you called. That was Christ. great. Did you? Are you going to get her to do an you ID did? that I'm gonna, way? Yes, I would like to get her to do an ID. Great minds think So have you ever gotten any pushback from the African-American community about for what? saying that you're a mistress of the dark? Oh, good heaven. <laughs> Darren? Darren, Darren, how insulted? do you feel about Are that? Are you upset about that? I'm upset about what? Well, Elvira is claiming to be the mistress of the dark. People. I don't care. Are you feel good cares? about it? You feel good about it? Shut up, Dave. God. <laughs> I had a question. Oh, um, you. I've actually wanted to ask for a long time is that, you know, uh, imitation, it happens a lot when someone has success doing what you do. Why hasn't there ever been someone like you since you began? Like another young woman becoming like... They tried. There has. But there it's never succeeded. And why, why hasn't it there's succeeded only one. for anybody? Because I'm special. The, when I first <laughs> met Elvira, they were holding a competition to find the next Elvira. Yeah. And I think somebody won, but they, they were just... just like, yeah, oh, no, I, I put there's that no show next. on. We had 2,000 uh, uh, women and men and everything else try out. And yeah. uh, then we got one who was going to be the next Elvira. And... I sent her out to like a parade in Nebraska, and that was the last thing anybody hired her for. It just yeah. it didn't work out. Too. So there was thought of passing it down to there was, else. and it didn't work. They, well, you know they why? They still wanted the real. I'll tell you why. I'll, I'll tell you why. Because why? what we want is the person with the talent that has warmed our hearts for all these years, and Aww. no matter how great she is, she didn't do that. Oh, look right. at Very true. It's kind of really the truth. truth. It's Stuck like trying to, to me because I live next door. You know what I mean? Like all the, all your experiences <laughs> don't get transfer, transferred on this person now. That's true. It's so like what, having what a care. new Mr. Rogers. It just wouldn't, it wouldn't work. No, you know there I mean? could never no, be there was a new another Mr. Mr. Rogers. If there was yeah. a new Mr. Rogers, I couldn't run up to him and say, thank you for being there with my childhood. Yeah. Because if he wasn't, right? No. Some new guy. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's become, it's, even though it's in costume, uh, I mean, can you imagine they get somebody else to play Pee Wee or, and I, I mean, do I don't it. know, or Gene Simmons? Yes, I could imagine that. Okay, no, I don't think, <laughs> you know what's, what's funny is there could be no Gene Simmons out of costume other than Gene Simmons. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? That's true. <laughs> he's, he's more a character out of costume. <laughs> yeah. he, he is, he is. You know is, what I mean? Like, he's that's the one so member true. of Kiss that, like, gets dialed back when he gets in. Yeah, I think we all like him more in costume. Yeah. Right, I yeah. think so, too. Whoa. Okay. All right, we must have been gone longer because I didn't realize I was going to play again. Sorry about that. But no, that's when you good. say, I did that it on purpose so and I wanted, that I wanted everyone to hear, to hear it again. again. Exactly. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, November 4th, there is going to be a screening of Morning Sun, the film. Uh, it is going to be at the Infinity Film Festival, which is presented by Epic Games and Unreal Engine, who are the makers of Fortnite. 
Uh, the festival itself is November 1st through the 4th in Beverly Hills. Uh, there's going to be tons of amazing experiences, all kinds of stuff, Silicon Valley and Silicon Beach to showcase all kinds of stories, advanced tech. There's going to be tons of awesome stuff there. If, if you would like to uh, get tickets and come and support this, Go to infinityfilmfestival.com. That's infinityfilmfestival.com. Definitely come out. Like I said, Morning Sun's uh, screening, which, Darren, you better be there. It's here? Huh? Yeah, it's November here. 4th. Uh, yeah, I'll be there. All right. You have to if get- I'm invited. <laughs> you don't invite me to shit. I'm, I'm inviting what, you what right you now do? on the air. <laughs> Didn't they send the, the movie to you? Did you watch it? Yeah, well, I sent him the link. He never fucking watched it. <laughs> Oh That's why he's saying God. you have to come. The you show that he, 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 how many weeks he's been here. I said in the film he just never watched it. You know what I? You know what I will say the trailer is fucking good. It's really. It, good. It, I'm sure it is. It's fucking a minute it's, and a half looks, long. It's easy to watch. <laughs> it looks really good. All right, so you'll come November fourth. Sure. The screening will be at four thirty uh, at the. I have the. I'm sorry about that. At the Real D Theater, which is on uh, Crescent Drive in Beverly Hills, November fourth, four thirty. The whole festival, November 1st through the 4th, go to uh, infinityfilmfestival.com to get tickets. You can't just walk up and pay, so get your tickets in advance. Is it some snazzy event? Yeah, there's going to be tons of stuff. It's not. It's going to go on for the, all those days, and there's going to be tons of great stuff. Cool. That's, Good for awesome. you guys. That's yeah. pretty awesome. Cutting edge stuff. I'm happy cool. for you guys. Yeah. Thank I'll you. clap for that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to do a Q&A afterwards. But you're not allowed to ask any questions, Darren. <laughs> Everybody else can ask all the much. questions. Yeah, anybody else can ask all the questions they want. Good for you guys. That's awesome. All right. Also, the phone number to this show is 323-230-4445 if you want to call in, ask a question. Uh, sadly, Dave had to leave us because he's not. Uh, he's feeling a little bit under the weather, I think. Mm -hmm. So he took, a, he took a ride with Elvira, which I would have done too. He's on sabbatical. Yeah. I can't uh, Elvira's how offering a ride. I would have just won with her too. I, I would. I wish she was here for the full two hours. I, I live, have so I live much next respect. to a couple of Koreans, so I don't live next to Elvira, which <laughs> kind of sucks. So I'll just stay here till eleven. I never met her before. I know you guys have met her before. I haven't met her either. She's oh. awesome. And She's great. I I live in the same neighborhood. Obviously, I live just a couple of blocks away from Dave, and I do for run now. <laughs> and I yeah for now, and I do run into her in the area where we live. And she's awesome. Every time I see her, she's the friendliest person in the world. She's nice to the kids. The kids have met her. She's she's a great person. I have yeah. so much respect for her still doing it after all this time and being yeah. able to like, I don't even think that I could do a show for six weeks, two shows a night, driving like an hour, two hours nope. each way. There's no way. And no. the makeup. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, wish, I wish I had more time because I had more to ask her, but I'm such a horror fan in general and there's no one like her in the horror community right. as far as like a, it's, she's as iconic as Freddy Krueger yep. or Jason yeah, yeah. but there's no one in her wheelhouse like she's really what she's she corners the market on that thing absolutely yeah. I'm cool. so curious to know the people that have tried to like rival her or you know she said that someone tried to sue her or something and it got shut down I'm like who are these other like characters well that what that was is uh, there was a woman who was in a bunch of films in the 60s named Vampira who was in like those B and C type of horror films. Okay. And she just kind of was this, you know, Dracula-ish sort of woman who had some makeup on and a wig and had like, you know, a, a cleavage area, I guess, would be, you know. <laughs> Which like, Jessica only dream about. But, but she didn't. I had him for a minute. She True. didn't <laughs> offer any like personality. She didn't talk. She just kind of walked like, you know, Night of the Living Dead and, you know, in those films. And that was it. And she claimed that Elvira stole her act. But clearly, Elvira is a completely different Entity. monster right. in that sense you know in that sense of the word and uh and it was her personality and everything that sold her as a character as that character yeah so that was what that was about i wish we could have gotten that into that a little more and she was the one who brought it up so she would have been willing to talk but it's, maybe uh once october's back. done and dave's back for mcmaster we can have mm -hmm. her back in here yeah when she's in her off season a more in-depth interview Absolutely. i feel i feel lucky that we got her in here in october Yes. You know, yeah. Hundred percent. You guys want to hear uh, kind of a funny story? Yes. yes. So you guys know I crashed my car coming, yes. coming to this show like a month ago. Yep. So in 2020, the new Ford Bronco comes out. Okay. Okay. 
So today I went to lease a Ford car so I can get in the door with them. So when it comes out, I can just yeah. move Stop and it. get it. It'll be an easy, easy push. So for two, three weeks, I've been uh, researching Ford cars that I wanted. And I settled on the Ford Escape. Okay. Because it's like a SUV. It's kind of like what my Volvo was. Mm -hmm. I knew the color I wanted. I knew the make and everything. I went to the dealership today, <clears throat> went to the section where they were. And I'm like, I think this is the one I want. I test drove it. I was there for almost four and a half hours trying to get the shit figured out. Did all the paperwork. Oh boy. Paid my money. Took the car. Drove to dinner to meet my friends. I got out of the car and I'm like, this thing is ugly as fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking I'm like, this, is, this isn't the car that I wanted. And I went to Google and there's two different Ford Escapes. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. And I got the shitty one. <laughs> no. And there's nothing you can do about and that's it now? No. And it's funny because like the, when the guy's doing the paperwork, he's like, okay, this line right here means no matter what happens, you can't come back and switch the car. I'm like, give me the fucking pen, dude. No problem. Those guys are oh, sitting in the shit. office like after you left laughing like, I can't believe he signed the thing. We so, gave him the shitty one. I wanted a Ford Escape. And I got the Ford Escape EcoSport. Which What's is the like difference? A, it's a fucking uh, Prius. Prius, yeah, yeah. Uh, Basically. But you, didn't you test drive it? You couldn't Yes! Tell? I test drove it. I looked over every inch of it. I looked in the back for the storage to be like, can I put guitars in this thing? I'm like, the videos I saw online, there was more space. <laughs> Maybe I'm just, I don't know. This is the this is the car. Oh my God, damn. And I, I got to dinner and got out and looked. I'm like, but there's a thing, mind game that they play. This thing fucking <laughs> sucks. Well, they got you. I sold no, cars, no. so I know how They didn't works. get me. I got myself. Like I went to, oh, I, went, were, I was yeah. on the lot and I said, this one, guys, this is the one that I want. Oh my God. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that you got to dinner, you got out and someone had like hit. No, I'm praying. Car. I hope someone hits it. I really <laughs> hope someone totals it tomorrow and I can go back and get what I want. <laughs> Man, I couldn't believe it. Were they the same price, the two cars that you wanted? No. And this one's cheaper. And I wondered why. And it's cheaper because a third of it is uh, missing. It's, <laughs> it's, it's like four it's feet also, shorter. It's also cheaper because they can't sell one to save their lives until you walked Dude, in the I door. Dude, right? I could have got this thing uh, for 11 grand if I bargained a little bit. Oh my God. But it's only for two years. But I couldn't believe. I'm not an idiot. And I know cars and i swindled myself <laughs> what made you decide to lease just because you only wanted it yeah. up until are you so, gonna buy the bronco that when it comes maybe. out or are you gonna i just don't know lease it? lisa i might lease because you're you're a big I fan lease because I, I want a new car every few years which i think i might be that person as yeah. well i don't know my last car i paid cash i have never leased or, or financed anything i mean it's nice ha not having a car payment if you just buy it outright but then it's your problem we need like, some more sponsors on dark matter yeah, if i want to do that when you lease, it's also like something's fucked up. You bring it in. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, granted, some companies are like, well, you still got to pay for it and all right. that. But it's a lot easier to deal with when it's a lease. Cause do they still call it a lease? Yeah. Oh, okay. Why? What do you think they call it? I sold cars and we were told explicitly not to call it a lease. What, do you, what, what were you supposed what would to call, you call it? it? Uh, a buyer's option program. Or oh. something like that. Because you can, at the end of your lease, you have the yeah. option to buy for whatever's yeah. left on the car. You bought... Do you buy a car? Yeah, I always buy. I don't think I'd, I'll ever buy a new car ever again, though. I think I would just buy used from this point. But forward. don't ever, don't ever buy an old rental car. I don't think I w would, but why not? Well, because people, people beat, beat on the them. fucking yeah. shit out of rental cars. That's true. Do you know what RDs are? No. It's when you floor the gas and put it in reverse drive, reverse drive, reverse drive over and over, and it. That, that's what I do in rental cars whenever I get them. Why would you RDs. do that? Because it's not my car. <laughs> <laughs> and it just destroys it and it's fun. It, it's fun. When I was just down in Mexico, you know, volunteering, uh, a couple of the girls had gotten a rental car and they were like going on these roads and they like lost the bumper and everything. But they're yes. like, well, we got full coverage. So yeah, they just turned the it thing. back in, you if know? If you ever rent a car, get full coverage. Because I know people that literally drove driven off the lot and within 15 minutes bam totaled the car yep. they come in another rental car and drop it off to you and then it's their fucking car. i was always under what? the impression though a lot of times if you pay for it with certain credit cards like an american express or something like that doesn't that give you yeah there's full coverage there's there's those kind of options depending upon what kind of cards you have or what kind of insurance you have yourself oh because a lot of people just say oh, i have car insurance you know and it covers rentals and shit like that but i always just go whatever it is because it's not going to be an exorbitant amount of money right it's going to be like for an extra 20 bucks you get the full coverage and okay, you're just cool. like fuck it do Boom, it no worries 
bam, just drive it through the fucking storefront <laughs> window. They're this like, the covered. storefront you got to cover, yes. but the rest Full of coverage. it's fine. <laughs> just, I run the guy over. <laughs> I pay him the 20 bucks for the full coverage then I fucking blast them do you remember we should talk to Pontius about this remember when Jackass they did the rental car where they bought a rental car and just lit it on fire no I don't remember <laughs> just, that <laughs> just lit it on fire like in the parking lot and like eat, eat dicks yeah, that's awesome that's good stuff oh my god who did you work for Darren maybe I shouldn't say why why are you it gonna fucking now. start selling cars next week I don't know a lot of people listen to this show I don't, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure that anymore. you're pretty, yeah. I'm pretty sure your boss doesn't listen. Your guy from Pontiac doesn't listen to Dark Matter. And I'm pretty sure not a lot of people listen to this show either. <laughs> Nissan. Oh, oh I, I do know a dude at Nissan. Okay. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Brian. Ask, Nissan. <laughs> ask him. Ask him if there's still. I mean, obviously, I wasn't here. I was in Virginia, so I don't know. Uh, but yeah, we <laughs> we were explicitly told not to. Because because people have a preconceived notion of what a lease is. Yeah, it's a rental, but that's what you want, right? Like, well, you, so a lot of people don't. Um, they want a, a, buy, uh, a buyer's option. Oh, tell me this: when you when you as a car salesman, when someone walks on the lot, what do you want them to do? Buy or lease? We want we want them to get in our office so we can control the situation immediately. But what is the outcome that you want? Do you want them to walk off the lot uh, with a lease? Or you want them to leave with a car, vehicle? right? Um. It, I, I don't I don't remember, but I don't think it really matters. We we want you to spend as much money as possible. Right, which is I why they, they want you to put as much money down. Right. As, and, and also work the, the monthly. They, they, the they mo- got me good today. Well, then. the monthly. No, because the, the, month, monthly. the monthly, though, I thought that's going to the bank anyway. Right. That's not really going to. We don't to care it. about the monthly. Yeah, they don't care about We're the monthly. We're trying to appease you with the monthly because right. all the thousands of shit is in the back end. Right, right, right. So, so. they want you to put as, as much down because you're never going to fucking see but that money ma- again. It doesn't matter it's to not me, though, right? Get, it's, no, no. It, well, it should. Well, it, it should matter to you because it's your money. No, right. what I'm saying, like, if I put down a grand and my payment is 500 bucks, or four grand and my payment is 280, what I, that is still the same for me. It yeah. just helps them if I put more down. Well, what that is is they're saying to you, if you put more money down, we can I'll get help you to get your monthly down. Right. Yeah, I get that. It's like I'm paying for your service to fucking right. chop my. But what I'm saying is, I'm spending the same money regardless. No, you're not. No, alone. you're not because whatever because of the mo- percentage. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, and whatever money that you're putting down, that's just out of your pocket. That that doesn't go towards your car. Yeah, it does. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. Does it in the long run? If you I mean, go to buy your really. car, you can't say, "Well, well I put four down." Like, like I, I said to the guy today, take I said, that off I said, the price. They don't do by that. By the time by the time you you're done with the banks and shit, like they that's eaten up pretty much. And also, MSRP is a bullshit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What is MSRP? The uh, uh, manufacturer su- suggested re- retail price. Yeah, that's oh. already jacked up. Yeah, of course, of, of course. Yeah. Um, I got a deal. We have a we have a listener friend who gave me like a, a code, so mm-hmm. it 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 gives you the lowest possible. It's like a friends and family mm-hmm, board mm-hmm. discount. So there's no bartering. I walk in, I give him this pin number, and that's, and what that's it the is. price. Yeah. There's no like haggling. It's like yeah, 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 yeah. so that that's was helpful. nice. Yep. So well, Greg, if you're listening, thank you, sir. The game, the game really is to get you to your monthly. Basically, to figure out how to get you to. So I can only pay three hundred dollars a month. Whatever you can, whatever can be done to get you to that. Um, you know, with the percentages and all that shit. Like you don't, you don't like the average person doesn't care about how much they're they're spending in in uh, uh, the APR and all that shit to the bank. Uh, as long as they can get you to the monthly. Um, they make all the all the thousands, you know, for, you know, in the end, in the you know, with the deal. Um, it, it it's 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 a fucked up game, really. Welcome to Here's finance the finance yeah. matter radio. <laughs> Here's the thing, also is <laughs> you, a, if you ahead. lease a car and then you want to buy it out in three, four years, whatever your lease, whenever your lease is up. You're basically buying the car now, right? And everything after you, you rented it, <laughs> yeah. Everything you've put into the car, as far as your monthly right. and whatever you whatever you drop down in the beginning, that doesn't matter. You're just now buying the car, right? It's like the game of my storage, yeah. where the shit in it now isn't worth what I've been paying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of it. Yeah, so yeah, wait, yeah. The, you still are paying more than the car is worth by the time your lease is out? Like if you've been well, paying, if you buy it out, yeah. fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never the only reason I buy a car out is, is I love it. 
I love this car. I want to have it for the next 15 years or whatever. You know, like that's, that's the worst the only, move you can. Yeah, have. It well, is. wouldn't you then at that point then just give that one back and then just buy that same car? Right. Starting but some from people don't do that. Some people fall in love with that right. specific yeah. car because right. you got your first blowjob in it or something. Yeah, mm. yeah Darren knows. Yeah, he right. got his first blowjob in it. He yes. also gave his first blowjob in a Nissan. In fact, <laughs> to get that's the how he through. got. That's how he got the job at exactly. Nissan. Exactly. <laughs> get the jetting jobs, giving jobs. <laughs> I give you a job, you get me a job. Is there that how go. this works? I've heard some crazy shit happen on the, on those lots. Well, what like what? Like blow jobs and fucking and all kinds of shit. Yeah. In order to get a deal? No, it's just that car dealers are scumbags. Did you ever fuck a dude on the lot? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> you always go off the lot. Just why so. are car dealers such scumbags? Because they're salesmen. At the, they're they're just good salesmen. And salesmen are. Scummy Slimy. people. They'll say anything to get you to fucking right. leave. Leave with. And, and it's they the same way with women. Without oh my god! I hate buying a car so much. It's a sleazy deal. I'd rather just send I, someone so else to go do it. I gave myself two hours today to get it done. I was there for over four. I'm like, what is going? First of all, the guy that <laughs> sold me the car is like maybe fifteen years old, and it's like his first six hours on the job. So every question has a. <laughs> I don't know. Let I me ask my supervisor. I'm like, can I just talk to that fucking dude then? Yeah. That's, there's also a game in that. This dude yeah. wants to talk about Ninja there's Turtles. There's also a game in that. Oh, well, let me get well, no, I, I know that. No, but, but, no, but yeah, this yeah. guy, he literally had no answers for me. <laughs> like, none. You're like, how much is this car? Too. He's like, like Pimple, I don't know. Pimple Where's face? the bathroom? I let me go ask him. Let me find out. What day is today? Ah, let me talk to my manager. <laughs> yeah, let me go see if I can approve this with my supervisors. Another bullshit. They go back there. They fucking jerk off for 15 minutes. Come yeah. back. Crazy. Oh, he said Play he, a little he, Tetris. Yeah. We he said he can give you $3 off. You know, like that's what they do. Yeah, we used to do stuff where the manager decides, oh, this person can't leave until they buy something. And it'll just be back and forth with manager after manager after manager you know after a while you're just like all right i'll, I'll fucking uh, you know what i mean it's like, like mental war yeah you, yeah it's mental war. you know you bring this you bring the, the first manager and the manager tells you this and this and that and then you bring the higher manager and then the manager brings the it first time i bought a car i bought my last volvo with cash so i stocked this car for like three weeks and i saw the price kept going down it was used and i went in with 23 grand cash and the guy's like is that what i think it is i'm like yes it's cash. And this is my final offer. And it still took me like an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They brought in new guys. They're like, listen, we can't, we can't do it for that price. I'm like, well, you can. Either you can or you can't. Because I'm, I'm buying a car here or next door. So should I leave now? Today. No, don't yeah. leave yet. I'm like, then we have a deal. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> but I ended up getting Dude, it for you got, 23. You got to go in with my wife. She's the best. Is she? This is what I'm putting down. This is what I'm paying. Well, well, let's talk. No, this is what I'm putting down. This is what I'm paying for the month. Is she fair or is she trying to fuck them? No. Well, she finds out. Like, right. you know, her brother used what to sell is, yeah. cars. We know people in the businesses and that kind of So she says, they say, yeah, that they'll go for that eventually. She's like, okay, bye. And yep. we leave. And then within an hour, they call. All mm -hmm. right, come back. We'll honor the deal. We were also trained that you always sell to the, to the wife. The minute, the minute, the minute you sell to the husband is when you lose the sale. Yeah, but that's that's the thing is is it's opposite. Sometimes the wives are it's tougher. opposite in my marriage. Yeah. She's the badass. She's, She's like, like Todd, going going this. No, no, Todd but, get in the car. But, yeah, <laughs> but the guy the, the, that's what they say. The guy usually is the easier person because at the end of the day, like especially if it's a family, mm -hmm. like it's the wife who's going to be driving the kids and like right, it's, right, it's right. more and happy you know, wife, happy life. If if she's happy, then right, you just exactly. Do it. Like as, right. long, as long as my wife's oh, you're happy, saying sell to the wife right. and then it's all right. done. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. As long as she's happy in my house, I don't care. There's no such thing as happiness. <laughs> so they're already fighting. But that's like a different. <laughs> that's a different issue. We're getting into some other shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, well, maybe we could just pay the extra 10 bucks, honey. She's like, no. <laughs> she backhands you in front of the dealer. No. Why don't, why don't you shut the fuck up? That's what I get. Who, who tips the delivery guy? Uh, I do, actually. Okay. Are you better about it? No. I got to give it to her. She's a good tipper. Okay. I feel like you both probably are. Yeah, I was well, going to say, you, you are both seem. If they deserve it. I feel like you, you'd be it, happy yeah. to leave nothing if someone's terrible. Yeah, You'll give someone nothing? I also feel like you're the type of guy that if you got like exceptional service you would throw down way more than oh, i do all the time like every I'm, time people are like why are you leaving that much i'm like this is fucking i've waited tables that's why yeah. you're such yeah but yeah. if you've done but there have service. been times i won't necessarily not tip but if it's exceptionally bad i'll tip and say 
I hope you fucking choke on this 20. <laughs> like, I'll let them know how unhappy I was with the service, and you should feel bad. But that here you, you go, money. you fucking <laughs> cocksucker. And a 16 yeah. year old girl goes home crying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially after I call her a cocksucker. This old man was so mean to me. <laughs> here's, here's this 10, you cunt. <laughs> choke on it. Oh, boy. I've actually balled up money at restaurants. Really? And thrown it at, and people? Thrown it at No, you have not. Yeah. I haven't really? done that in a long time, and they, but and I they have. bend down and pick it up? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm like. That's embarrassing. <laughs> that, that's as hell. Like you the, love throwing money at people. That's like the bend down and pick <laughs> yeah. it up with the bum story that you I've told many bum. times. You fucking bum. <laughs> you, you the know best what? part of that story was was my friend seeing it. Yeah. You know, but. Uh, I don't tell you enough. You're a good dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this story this comedian was telling on, on the radio about how he, he this guy cleaned his tank and he was just such a cheap fuck that he that you cleaned know his tank every, his his fish tank. Oh mm-hmm. and he tipped he you know, he would always ask him for a tip and he's like, you know, this fucking cocksucker. So he goes upstairs, he tells his girl to go get him eight dollars and quarters and he's like, I watched this fucking guy cup his hands while I poured quarters in his hand. And it's like, yo, it's it's really not worth the I eight saw, bucks. Yeah. A, I wouldn't take it. There's a there's like a quasi strip club in Hollywood called Jumbo's Clown Room. Yes. You guys all know, but mm-hmm. yes, people yes, listening yes. don't know. But it's like a burlesque kind of very small place, not fully nude, but it's like a people like to go there a lot. I was there once and I saw a motherfucker throw change on the stage. <laughs> and this chick <laughs> this chick came off the stage over the rail and started choking this dude on the floor. And we all started cheering. <laughs> He threw like dimes and nickels and pennies and yeah, that's not him. the kind of throwing that I do. Like the kind of throwing that I would do if I'm upset is I'll throw a fifty at you so that you can't complain, but right. I still feel like I've made my point. Yeah. <laughs> you can't throw a change. The only right. change, the only change that makes you like a cheap ass was with, with that bum. <laughs> that time. Right. Also, jumbles. I saw a girl pick up a lit cigarette with her vagina, take a puff. <laughs> With her vagina, and then hand it to a dude, and he put it in his fucking mouth. Oh my god! I would do. I would do that. That dude's dead now. I'm I sure. have to say that the one time I went to like a real strip club, I did think it was quite sad for this girl to do this dance, and then all these guys are throwing money, and then she's like trying to collect her clothes and the, and pick yeah, up the dollar bills. Wasn't that, wasn't that it is sad at the end. At the end, it, it, it does look really sad. Yeah. It's rough. It's like you got your little. I know. Like, the song, the song's just, over and it's quiet. Yeah. She's like, Thank you. yeah, and she's like trying to like crawl around and pick up her money. I'm like, can't someone do that? And you're all, happy Mother's Day, Mom. (laughs) Yeah, I got to say, I got to admit, I have never been comfortable at strip clubs. It's a weird environment. It's fucking weird. Have you ever been there early day? Oh, yeah. I went to a uh, Red Sox game. Congrats, Red Sox, by the way. Where people order lunch and shit there? Like those ones? The Red Sox play play the Angels in Anaheim here, and I went with a buddy once for a day game. Uh We showed up like 11.30 or noon. So we rolled into the strip club at noon, and they're like, serving breakfast Gross. at the tables and right. it was disgusting i saw a chick must have been minimum seven months pregnant like i was ready for the hand to come out and like take change and pull it back into the puss <laughs> it was crazy stretch marks and bullet wounds yeah i've been to some seedy ones but i've also been to like the high-end ones in vegas where it's just it's so pathetic too like every chick is on the hustle all yeah. the dudes are fucking wasted mm-hmm. and like that weird obsessive stare of like you know like staring at girl, this I'm girl? Like, no I'm gonna get that girl and I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna have her rub on me for 18 songs and go home broke <laughs> and like these also these other this is another cut of guy that thinks like I'm gonna. I'm gonna take her home. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. leave with this girl. You know what I mean? And I'm just. Like, well, they're, they're selling the fantasy. Yeah, they yeah, make yeah, you yeah. think that like you're the one. And then you're like the one normal girl that's in there, and then the stripper's just like, "Can you just please talk to me and like let's have a normal conversation?" <laughs> yeah. And you're just like, "I don't know what to talk to." It's you what about. we do. Like people, people listen to this. They think we're talking to them. Listen, we're talking to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> if you think it's you, we're talking to somebody else. <laughs> we're selling just, the fantasy. Yep. We don't even know who you are. <laughs> we're selling the fantasy. I also think it's it's weird to see like women hit, you know hit on dudes like you know like they need it you know yeah. what I mean because because in real life they never they never have to do that dude the worst it's so weird is to see them do that it's like walk around and watch the one girl who's asking every dude yeah it's so and sad she can't 
<laughs> nail the deal. She can't sell her pussy. Like you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> which is which basically pussy should sell itself. Yeah, right? that's what I'm saying. Like someone's like gonna a take dance? it. Would you like to dance? Well, hey, yeah. baby, hell nah. Have, you want to buy me a drink? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't even like to go. Like well, I've been with crews of friends, especially when I was younger. I haven't done this in years and years. But we would go, go to Vegas, go to strip, you know, gamble all night, get drunk. They want to go to strip club, and I had I hate to admit it, but I'd be the guy sitting like at the corner of the table, with my arms crossed, my yeah. legs folded, like don't approach me, and I'm I don't even want to look. Like you know, like, I'm not look pleased. up at the stage. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I'm I'm not. It's that's not the fantasy I'm looking for. I, I've said this before, <laughs> but I've never. Uh, I went to a strip club on tour with with Dave and Tommy Lee, and I walked in with those two. Mm-hmm. I have never felt more invisible in my life, <laughs> dude. Nice. Like you yeah. walk into a strip club with Dave Navarro and Tommy Lee, I I was like Casper. I could have robbed that place. No one would have seen yeah, yeah, yeah. me. No one oh, spoke to me. I've been to, <laughs> been to strip clubs with Dave too. Yeah, yeah. but like to yeah. to be in a strip club with Tommy. While they're playing girls, girls, girls is and fucking knowing, amazing. And knowing how huge his dick is on top of it. Well, that's where I sat. I didn't. I thought I was on the bench. I was sitting on his hard dick like a bird on a branch. He carried like, you in on it for like an hour. Yeah. I thought I was being carried in, but I was, just I was also I was dick. very disappointed that it's not just like one long stage. I thought you were one long dick. I thought you were talking about Tommy's dick. What? Ladies and gentlemen, next up on the stage, cinnamon. They all sound the MCs all sound the same. But I want it to just be like one state where there's one girl that's like the center of attention of the entire club, and she gets no. it for the five minutes her song is on or Basically, whatever. Yeah, it's Battle of the Bands with like five bands playing. At once. Oh my god! Yeah, but, you're just like there's a bunch of different little stages, and I'm like, what the fuck? From what I understand, that's the bullshit part when they're like, you got to get up on stage. In the rotation, they want to be in the crowd working dudes yeah, to that's take them back and have them. Yeah, they don't want to be on the stage. Yeah, that's like the that's like the shit work. You need the champagne. But in my head. mind, that's what I wanted it to be. I yeah. wanted her to come out in her like get up, her costume or whatever. And you want jumbos? You want jumbos? Elizabeth Berkeley and what is it? Showgirls. Show yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, I wanted the that to happen. Chick who went to Versace the night before. Oh, God. I have a dumb question. Go ahead. I never thought of it. Are there? There are no dumb questions. Go. This one mm-hmm. might be. Go ahead. Are there black strip clubs where it's all black women? Yeah, right, that's pretty fucking home. stupid. <laughs> yeah, that was the dumbest. Are there all? Yeah, you ever been to Atlanta? Atlanta? Yeah, there are. There I are. have been to Atlanta. I've actually been Dude, to a strip club. Forget there. about Atlanta. Go to Hollywood Boulevard. There's like one close to Vine. Okay. Black strip clubs do way better than white strip clubs. I don't Why know is that. I mean, the culture of black strip clubs. But it's all music. black women. There's no white women dancing. Maybe like a Spanish girl or an Asian girl. Black dudes like a lot of white chicks. They go to the black one, dudes the like regular women, women like yeah. everybody else. <laughs> I don't think black dudes are dicing Wait, them up in so, categories. So we have something in common? <laughs> yeah. Finally, after yeah. all these years? Yeah. Are there Asian strip clubs? I'm sure I, in China. Are yeah. there Down syndrome strip clubs? <laughs> Aren't the well <laughs> maybe in Koreatown maybe right? No, yeah, there's no yeah. strip club. There are they have the karaoke girls. Indian? Yeah, the, the, I'm sure. They are, I don't think with Asians it's so much of a strip culture. They have like girls who will hang out with you. Girls who hang money. out for money, like it's escorts, the, actual yeah. escorts. Yeah, but they all come like they sit at a table and they all come right. and they hang out and they like they bring a truckload of them to, yeah. to their karaoke bars. Yeah. Do you guys want to open like an Indian strip club? Sure. Sure. Let's do know. it. Like Vindaloo Palace, but it's yeah. all like hot. <laughs> can you Indian just have girls that can actually dance and do some really cool? Well, like, I was just no one say. cares about the dance. No, 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 no that's I not do. true. I, I'm on Jess's side, and I'll explain. I feel like if we did an Indian strip club, Dark Matter presents an Indian strip club, Vindaloo Palace, whatever it would be. <laughs> tan- <laughs> I'm a tantalizing, tantalizing tandoori, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I feel like the girls would have to do like the dance at the end of Slumdog yeah, Millionaire. Yeah. Like what, like that belly dancing? Could, yeah, like, no, that Indian Bollywood dancing. Yeah, they do, and it's all choreographed. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah, then I'd be into it. Yeah, but then I'm it'd be expensive. The- <laughs> <laughs> I'm into, like, the the dancing, like, when the girls are in sync. What's it called? Like, when they're, like, in high school, when they have the teams. It's not... Cheerleaders? cheerleaders? No, they're not cheerleaders, <laughs> but it's, like... Like kind of like the Rockettes, where they're so in sync with one another, like synchronized dance. dancing, like synchronized. All right, when I went to Paris, okay, recently last summer, whatever. Vindaloo was it? Paris. My wife, yeah, Vindaloo Paris. <laughs> we, my wife and I went to the Crazy Horse, which okay. is like the original. Well, Motley sings about it. In yeah, gr- Crazy in fact, Horse, Paris, France. It's the it, 
every city has a crazy horse, whether it's a bar or a strip club. Like there's crazy, crazy horse is a popular name for strip places in the States. They all come from this play. That's where that name comes from. We paid like a lot of money to get the best seats and the, and it was like a cabaret. They're topless and all, but it's what you're talking about. Amazing. And dancing. I got to admit the truth. I was sitting you enjoyed there like, the show? <laughs> I was sitting there like, eh, you know, and then I was like, these girls are wonderfully talented. <laughs> like, it was, They're so old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I can't believe how awesome this Bravo, is. Bravo, madam. Bravo. Oh, yeah, my wife and I had a great time. It was awesome. I but that's that, the then. kind of shit you're talking about. Yeah. I've been this was like pro. Vindaloo Palace and mm-hmm. Crazy Whores. <laughs> crazy Whores? Crazy yeah. Whores. I like that. <laughs> that's what we should do. If anyone's listening, please make up a Vindaloo Palace uh, picture for us without or standing there. Crazy Whores or Slutty Horse. That's <laughs> <laughs> just, just so stupid. <laughs> slutty Horse would be pretty good. Whorish Horse. <laughs> Should we take a break? All right. Uh, no, we should actually take a break because uh, I need some I water. To, yeah, and I have to. Uh, Jess has diarrhea, so we should probably wrap it up. <laughs> Can we go home then? No. I. Uh, no. Oh, man. Do you want to go, Jess? If I have diarrhea, I do. There's a toilet right here. Do you have it? I can help no. you out. All right. But if um, I did have diarrhea, I would want to go home. Before we go, would you guys <laughs> rather diarrhea be- palace? <laughs> <laughs> if you guys were homesick. Would you rather be vomiting or have diarrhea? Diarrhea any day of the week. I hate vomiting. fucking puking. Really? If I'm home, I love diarrhea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. If I have Slim nowhere down. to be, yeah. I love it. Just like chill. But look at my Twitter for a half hour. Yeah, great. yeah. You're right, Jess? <laughs> <laughs> I got to agree with that. I one. open up and you laugh at me. <laughs> vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very you know funny how thing. vulnerable it is when you're having <laughs> diarrhea? <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Judge much? I have loose stool often, so I'd r- much rather throw up. <laughs> Ugh, I hate fucking puking. Maybe we should wrap this up. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, way to cut that off. I didn't. Cut no, it that off. was that was your. I think that, was that your wasn't. Shit. I didn't. I didn't. He didn't. He thing. didn't touch anything. Yeah. I thank s- you. I saw him touch it. Mm, I turned your I mic have on. His, so I gotta have his black. I mean, back. I mean. <laughs> All right, three two three two three zero four 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 five. That was Danzig with "Long Way Back." The more I hear hell. Danzig, the more I realize he might have my favorite vocal vocals of all time. Famous voice is what the word I'm looking for. <laughs> my favorite voice. Him more and so Ozzy. than Trent. Him and Ozzy, yes. Like when you hear Trent, you're not like you don't instantly know who it is. But when you hear Ozzy or Danzig, you know immediately who. Well, you're especially listening. Ozzy. Yeah, but I yeah. guess both of them. Yeah, for sure. Very iconic. Anyway. Same thing with Robert Plant, though. Mm, no. You don't think? No, hack. <laughs> What's he done lately? Nothing, so. Fuck you. You wish. You want some of this Fuck. dick, Jess? You want this dick? You, what dick? <laughs> oh! <laughs> and that goes for your Red Sox, too. How dare you? <laughs> You're a Yankee fan. You have nothing to say. They've got embarrassed at home. Like, go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get into it. We'll, talk, we'll get into it on my baseball show. Okay. That I'm okay. starting on Dash. All right. Do we have a phone call? Yep. Hello. Hello. You're on Dark Matter. Who's this? Hey, Dark Matter. is Lenny. Hey, what's going on? Um, I was going to ask you guys. You guys legit just talked about the topic about who's your favorite vocalist. And I have two questions, actually. The first one is going to be who's your favorite vocalist? Definitely not Ozzy or Danzig. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate on Ozzy. No, I, I honestly, if I were to pick my favorite singer of all time, it might be Ozzy as far as being a singer. I think it's probably Ozzy because he's so iconic and uh, he used to be able to do anything. All right. Did you see that recent uh, last tour, end of tour, whatever, uh, Black Sabbath documentary? It's been on a lot no. lately. No. It's their, it was their I final. Have. You saw it. Okay. It was their final tour, final thing. And they they go from live footage to the concerts that they're playing that are their final ones, and they go to the studio also and show them fucking around the studio. And he sang the song "Changes" at the end of the documentary. I'm has, going through changes. Yeah, he sang it. He sang it. We've seen Ozzy yeah. a lot play with Dave, play with Royal Machines. Ken sometimes Freddy, yeah. great, sometimes, sometimes great, sometimes, sometimes a little rough, which, but it's fine. It's fine because he's first seventy. Of all, he's seventy. Is has been doing it for all these years. The venues aren't this, you know, the super arenas that he's used to playing. 
that he sung that thing i was like i can't believe how fucking great this guy is his voice at times can almost bring me to tears Personally, I'm actually surprised that he can't pronounce a single sentence correct as in speaking, but he could sing perfectly, like, great. It's a yeah. good it's, point. It's very true, too. Like, I, I get so shocked about that. I'm like, what? What's going on here? He's so brutally English when he speaks, so yeah. you can't even tell. But when he sings, he's like a goddamn angel. And he kind of, yeah. like, mumbles and... Yeah, yeah like, some of his words are mumbles and, like... I'm like, okay, what are you saying again? Like, no, no, Dave's good to see you. One of my proudest Aussie moments is, is he saw the documentary that Dave and I did. He saw Morning Sun and he came over to me and I never expect him to remember who I am. I you know, met him several times. I'm friendly with Jack. I believe I saw this interaction. Was, was that a, a Raw Machine show? No, it was actually at, you might have seen him say it to Dave. Okay. Because I know Dave told yes, me, oh yeah, he came, is. yeah, yes. he, it was at Billy Morrison's art show mm -hmm. actually and he came over to me and he's like, Oh, I fucking saw the movie. It was fucking great. And I was like, I got chills. I was like, I can't believe. I got chills I can't right now thinking about yeah, that. Yeah, one, I can't believe he saw it. A Two, I can't believe moment. he remembered that I was the guy who <laughs> directed it and I was in it. And he came over to me and he was so genuine, sincere. It wasn't just like, oh, I should say something because I play with the guy who was in it a few times. It was, he, he was made excited. A point, he saw me and beelined over to me with that walk and that look. And you're like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like scared for a second. It was like, I literally almost brought me to tears in front of him, but it was the, one of the best moments I've ever had. No more tears, Todd. No more tears. <laughs> Jessica, no favorite singer? Tears. Favorite voice? Personally, Va me, uh, Lenny, Lenny, Lenny. No, Lenny, go ahead. We're, we're waiting for Jessica. I don't know who my favorite Tiffany vocalist. I was gonna say Belinda Carlisle, but I don't. Deb Gibb. Deb. Deb Debra Gibson, Gibson. But when she's on tour, it's Debbie. Yeah. I could get behind Barry Gibb. I bet you could get behind <laughs> oh, Barry Gibb like, in a big way. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, uh, Neil Diamond? What's your name? Best Darren? vocalist, Neil Diamond. That's pretty good. That's a good one. I can listen to anything. Listen. That, that guy could sing the alphabet. Daryl Hall, we maybe. We talk about how talented Steve Isaacs is. Mm -hmm. Next time he comes he in, awesome. he has the ability to make a song about anything in Neil Diamond's voice. That's amazing. You give him any subject, and he will sing a full song <laughs> about that, that in Neil Diamond's voice. That guy's fucking talented. Could have him on a subject like anal. Let's see that. Look, hold on. Let me get him on the phone. I'll call <laughs> him on the phone. Stick it oh into my, my ass. Call Steve Isaacs. <laughs> Why? Hold on. Call well, Steve Isaacs. Personally, three two three. My, my four, no, <laughs> hold on, hold on, Lenny. We'll get, we'll get who you, who's yours is. I hope he picks up. up. Oh my god, no. Steve, pick up. Oh my god. Hello, Steve. What's up? Uh, you're on the radio right now. You're on Dark Matter, and I had a favor to ask you, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. Okay. We're talking about your talent in making a song about anything with Neil Diamond's uh, vocals. Uh, yeah. And we would like a song right now on the spot in Neil Diamond's voice about anal sex. Go. <laughs> okay, I'm in bed with my wife right now. Okay. Be no better time. <laughs> no better time. Let me give it a shot. Okay. Um, this is something I like. It's dark and stinky. Goes down the tube. No, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, were do, you were doing it. You're Steve, doing you were it. doing it. You were off to a great start, dude. <laughs> no, I got the punchline too quick. Um, <laughs> all right, dude. I'm fucking in bed, dude. You're, wait, wait. You're fucking in bed? No. I'm fucking in bed. All right, listen. Bed. Listen, I'll give you, I'll give, you have a project. <laughs> Next week, we're going to call you, and I want you to have a song ready. I'll have a fucking doozy, bro. All right, I love you. Thank you. Okay, love you. Bye. Why are you guys torture me like that? Torture you? We just tortured our no, buddy by. He, she said, "Why are you torturing him?" Oh, he deserves it. Yeah, he, he does loves deserve it. it. <laughs> All right, Lenny, wow. favorite favorite vocalist, go. Steve Isaacs. Mine is dead, but Peter Steele from Typo Negative or. Oh, your milk white so. neck, the devil's mock. That's my Peter Steele impression. <laughs> she in love with herself. I really think Daryl she Hall might be one of my favorite vocalists. Really? That guy's a fucking yeah. man eater, though. Oh, he's so good. Man over matter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so shocked at how tall Peter Steele actually is. 
Not anymore. He's pretty. Uh, <laughs> he's he's shorter yeah, he's now. Pretty, oh, short now. He's pretty short now. Shriveled down. All right, Lenny. Thank you very much. I'll also add a second question. But that's right. Go ahead. No, next week. Okay. No, let, let, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna ask you guys. What are some people? One one person that you met, you were like, "Why the fuck am I near this near this person?" Uh, Matt Sorum. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> that is one hundred percent mine. I say Gene Simmons. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I have. I've heard a lot of people feel that same way. I've had a couple of uh, not so fun interactions with him t- a couple of times, but then again, he was a guest on Spread TV when, when Dave and I mm-hmm. were doing that show, and he was fucking awesome. I feel like he's a guy that's a wonderful guest for anything that you do, yeah. but maybe not the best conversationalist outside of right, right, right. cameras or microphones. Is that he, your he, answer? He's What's better your... as a demon than actually Gene. Yeah. Um, well then, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, do you have one? You, it looks like you got something bouncing around. No, I was here. just trying to think. I'm like, have I met anyone that I was really disappointed in, or that I've like waited on, or okay, I, I've, I actually have a, a, another one. Okay, I was at the Staples Center, and it was the Celtics playing the Lakers, and the Celtics had a player forever ago named Bill Russell, mm-hmm. who won 11 championships. Yeah. He's the only guy in the Legend. world that has yeah, he has more rings than he has fingers. Mm-hmm. So I'm in one of the boxes up in Staples Center, and I'm in the hallway, and Bill Russell's walking towards me. And being from Boston, he's he's a fucking legend. Right. So I walked up, and I'm like, Bill, I'm from Boston. I just had to say hello and shake your hand. He goes, okay, and? <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, I just want to shake your hand. He goes, all right. And he didn't put his hand out. I had to put mine out, like, real slow. <laughs> and he shook it, and he goes, anything else? <laughs> I guess not. That just you made, fucking prick. That made me think of um, you know, we used to work at Indy one hundred three point one and Henry Rollins did his show oh, there. Uh-huh. And I was an engineer for his show a couple times and he was super nice to me when we we're on the air and then like probably like a year ago I was at the airport with my family and we were getting ready to leave and I saw that he was like sitting by us and I was like, Oh my god, I was like, I hate to bother you, but I used to work on your show at Indy and he's like, Yeah. And I was like, oh, I just, I was like, I didn't mean to bother you. I just wanted to like say hello. And he's like, "Mm mm-hmm. He was such a dick to me. (laughs) That sucks. And I was like, oh, that's a bummer. Because it wasn't like I was just like a random fan. Like I actually worked on his show. There was, all right, here's mine. Here's mine. Biggest dick I ever met where I wanted to fucking punch him in the fucking face. Andrew Dice. Todd is meeting right now. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? I I mean, he was nice. I'm sure he was, but. I was working at a place that he was friendly with the people who owned it. Right. So you were just and some I, shit head. Yeah. And I was just like, him. nice, Darren. And there was a bunch of conversation <laughs> going on and it happened to be something that I knew a fact about. And I said the fact that I knew and he just turned around and just did dice to me like, who the fuck are you? Who's fucking talking? <laughs> I was like, you know what? <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know what? Fuck you. And my boss pulled me by my elbow. He's like, dude, you can't. I'm like, no, fuck this yeah. guy. Yeah. Fuck him. And yeah. this was after. Oh, he was huge. Him. And then he wasn't huge. This anymore. is him at the bottom again. Yeah, and I was just like, fuck you, you fucking piece of shit. <laughs> I, I still, to this day, I fuck, I can't watch that guy without thinking about that. Incident. It's funny because he's, he's one of the people I'm currently trying to go after to get in here. That might be a good story. Well, he would never remember. No, I know, but it'd be but, yeah, it was yeah, fun yeah. to get but, into. Uh, yeah, I, was, I fucking hate that. All right. It would be funny if you brought it up and he was like, I've been <laughs> hating you for yeah. my... <laughs> you like, you're that that guy. Guy. I've yeah. been looking for you for 30 <laughs> years, <laughs> you <laughs> prick <laughs> bastard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know the funny thing is, the only reason I don't like Gene is because he, he was trying to flirt with my sister. What, what's, wrong, what's wrong with that? Is your sister hot? <laughs> um, not to me. I'm her fucking brother. Mm, well, you know. <laughs> Brotherly love. He's being <laughs> protective. Would you, so rather, okay. would you rather him hit on you? <laughs> hey, sis, you're fucking hot. I want to fuck you. That's weird. Easy, Jesus, Lenny. <laughs> Get a room with yourself. All there's right. Also thank, been, thank you for the thank questions. Thank you for the call. Um, there's also been people that. Uh, who's your most disappointing? Not because it was a bad. Bill good, Russell was my most disappointing. disappointing. Just because, like, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Like, I'm on. I was I wasn't like an adult. Yeah. I was like, I was younger then. I looked like yeah. a young man, and just I just want to shake your hand and thank you, you for making my family happy for right. 15 years. You know who it's else? Weird. Sports figure wise was a fucking. Dick. Who? <laughs> Johnny Bench. Oh, really? He, there was a Married with Children episode. Maybe the best catcher of all time. By yeah, the way. that's yeah. yeah. And for of and, he my, knew it. and right. of my, my era when was I was there, a, he was a kid. Red? Yeah, he was on yeah. the Reds. 
And like I had like four Johnny Bench baseball cards and that I had bought. Went to the store, paid the quarter for whatever the fucking baseball cards were then, came in the pack. Like I've had them all those years. Remember I gave you a bunch of Yeah. You gave uh, me a Red awesome Sox. and a, cards and you gave me an awesome bat recently. Yeah, too. yeah. And that bat's from that day. Yeah. And his name's on it. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. probably why yeah. I wanted to give it to you. I yeah. get this fucking bat. Disgusting out of my- bat out of here. Yeah, all right. So Dan has the it was like Frank Thomas and Danny Tartable and Johnny Bench and all these, yeah, there. all these baseball players, and they all signed this bat. I gave it to Dan, and this is years ago that I've had. I've had this bat for years. Well, I had these four cards, so I bought them because I knew, you know. And obviously, I'm with Faustino, and I'm part of the, the the family there. So I said to him, "Hey, would you mind?" He's sitting with Ed O'Neill. I said, "Hey, would you mind signing these? I've, I've had these since I was a kid." And he's like, "Yeah, you're just gonna fucking sell them." I was like, "No, I'm not." You know, I've, I've had them since I was a kid. It would be awesome to just pass them down to my kid, whatever. Like, And he was just like, all four of them? <laughs> I was like, well, then pick whatever you want. Like, I, these are the ones I had. Like, uh, you know, and I felt like a little oh, kid. Oh, it's and, crushing. Yeah, so he signed, a, he grabs them from me. Uh. He's like, <laughs> fucking starts writing. And there, I'll show you because I still have the cards. Like, he even just did it angry, the signatures. And he's like, here. And I, I felt I should have, and this is a missed opportunity on my part. Ripped it up. I should have ripped him up and fucking dropped him at his feet and been like, fuck you, you fucking bald cock. Absolutely. <laughs> I agree. You catch my fucking cum in your mouth. You mentioned bitch. you mentioned dice. Jesus, relax. <laughs> you mentioned dice a minute ago. That's how mad I was. <laughs> you mentioned Andrew Dice Clay a minute yes. ago. Mm-hmm. And you also mentioned uh Ozzy coming up to you and, and congratulating you on something. Maybe my proudest moment of meeting an idol. I had a very surreal moment myself today. Mm-hmm. Some of you may know, I'm in A Star is Born, the new movie that's out. Bradley Cooper and Bra- Lady Gaga. Oh, that's mm-hmm. right. Yes. I have a scene in it. I don't, I don't talk or anything, but I'm pretty featured in there. Mm-hmm. So I've been getting a lot of text messages lately. Like, mm-hmm. dude, did I see you in A Star is Born? I'm like, you did. <laughs> today I got a text. And the title is apropos. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. I got a text today from... Keith Folk, who is the Red Sox pitcher, the closer who got the last out of the 2004 World Series. So mm-hmm. he's like a hero of mine. Mm-hmm. How does he have your number? We kind of became friends over Twitter, and then we exchanged numbers, and we've hung out a few times. But like, it's 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 amazing for me. I know you guys think sports are ridiculous, but no, 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 I know. it's I get pretty it. fucking special for me. Mm-hmm. So he texted me today and said, "Did I just see you in a Star Is Born?" <laughs> Like, <laughs> yes, Keith, you did actually. <laughs> but it was a really amazing. Yeah, it's thing. fucking awesome. But uh, another cool thing, by the <laughs> way, it's in theaters now. Go check it out. And, Andrew <laughs> Dice Clay is in it, mm-hmm. and I might be. He might. I think he should be up for best supporting actor in this movie. I've heard he's really good in it, and he was really good in the Woody Allen movie. What, what I didn't movie see that was, one. He was really the good. The last in it. one, I think, yeah. wasn't it? And you know what? I'm. I was a huge fan of the guy. You know, I grew up in New York. I remember the Dangerfield special that changed his entire life and all that. And that's why it was so disappointing what a dick he was. Yep. You know? But he he plays Gaga's dad in this movie, and it's like, it's remember when Rambo or uh, Stallone was in Creed last mm-hmm. year mm-hmm. when he played like old grumpy Rocky? Mm-hmm. That's what this is. It's so good. How did you end up getting into that movie? Did you the movie in the movie Bradley Cooper plays a guy named Jackson Maine and it's about his band and how he brings Gaga out on stage and you know their relationship. Right. Mm-hmm. But they wanted to hire real touring touring tech people, people that know how to act on stage and don't look mm-hmm. stupid doing what they're doing. Right. So my buddy Robbie Allen was like the main tech. He played Bradley Cooper's tech in the movie. He hired friends to actually be on stage and awesome, like, That's awesome. look like they know what they're doing. But it was fun. Yeah, cool. I remember when you did that. That's awesome. It was yeah. neat. And I went to the theater the other night. I didn't know if they're actually going to use any of it, but it's it's pretty featured in there. In I the actually very gaily love the Barbara Streisand one. I've never Chris, seen it. I've never seen it's it either. It's a fucking great movie. Yep. But it's people are movie. raving about this one. Yeah. Everyone's Dude, Bradley Cooper's so the shit. That guy is a real actor. Like, yeah. Broadway and, and, plays and da da Like, he knows what the fuck he's doing. And I, apparently I'd met him before he was an actor. I don't remember at all. But everyone says still that he's just the most down-to-earth, nicest dude. And from what I saw on the set, he was super cool to everybody. Yeah. And he's acting in it and directed it. Yeah, yeah. He's so this is his big directing debut. So power. He used to go to our gym. Yeah, I've seen him there. I've seen him at other... He's he seems handsome. a little bit eccentric, though, like wearing like the loud... I've, uh, I think Allison went to college okay. with him. Okay. He's my wife's favorite dude. Favorite? Him and Charlie Hunnam. 
from uh, Sons oh, of Anarchy. Who doesn't Son, have Sons of Anarchy? Jax. Apparently, he's well, that, very down to earth too, yeah, he and like is. the nicest dude. I've been went, around him a lot with I Manson. Went, I went with Dave to shoot uh, when he shot uh, Sons of Anarchy, and I think I've told this on the radio before, but <laughs> we're in the car with him, the van going to location, and it's just us three and the driver. And he's sitting in front of us, and Dave and I are flipping through recent suspension pictures. We must have done, just done it like a week ago or something. We're flipping through, and he's like, you know, he's English. Yep. So he's like, what are you guys looking at? So we show him the pictures. We tell him what it, what it is. And we're like, yeah, it's, you know, this ex- get this great experience, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you have to face all these fears, and you kind of go on. What happened? And, uh, and he's just looking at us, looking at us, looking at us. It's a long, dramatic pause, and he looks at us, he goes, you guys are fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> and all three of us started cracking up. It was awesome. That's fantastic. And he's very handsome. I saw him one day at Air I'll just go on the record saying that in person. There was a time where Dave was shooting the, a scene with him, and I'm watching with the director and producer. They're like, oh, sit down and watch your boy do in the monitor, and we're just sitting there. And... Uh, Charlie Hunnam delivers his line, and Dave kind of just uh, uh, and and I go I I I nudge the director. I go, bro, he just got lost in Charlie Hunnam's eyes. <laughs> so at the point, Dave comes back, and he's like, oh, "I'm so sorry." He's like, "I just got lost in Charlie <laughs> Hunnam's eyes." I just know his sense of humor of so well. So that was very good. funny. That's good. That's funny. Do we have another phone call? Yeah, yeah there's <clears throat> a number of them. Oh, oh, let's well, take uh, yeah, any three minutes. Them. What? Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Hello, you're on with Dark Matter. Who's this? Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm calling from Niagara Falls, Canada. All right. I've been there. <laughs> a, a lot of people have. Yes. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's wonderful. I, think, I love all the I, wax museums up there. I think there's two or three people that have visited Niagara Falls by now. All right. <laughs> what can we do for you? Oh, I, I, I fear the conversation has moved beyond this now, but uh, you were talking about vocalists. And yes. You were talking about Glenn Danzig. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you guys have ever heard this description, but a friend of mine said to me, and I just thought it was the perfect description of Glenn Danzig's voice, Sandra. said uh, he basically sounds like a satanic Elvis. Oh, yeah. he's like a, he's, yeah. People call him, uh, you don't realize, but he's kind of a crooner. Mm-hmm. Like in a weird yeah, way, he's like he a is. metal crooner, mm. like Sinatra yeah. or Elvis. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Only, only darker mm-hmm. and shorter. <laughs> he's yeah, a little guy and shorter. I believe he's five and, uh, two. No, I think he's five. He's two. shorter than I am. Wow. Yeah, I've stood next to him. He's shorter than I am. And you're five two and a half, so yeah. he must be <laughs> <laughs> looking down at him. I, I'm five three, so so yeah. Nice. Down at him. Um, also, you were talking about Ozzy, and remember when the show The Osbournes was on the air? Yes. yes. And what I love, you were talking about the difference between the way Ozzy sings versus the way he talks. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, he's, it's, you know, it's impossible not to love Ozzy. He's, you know, he's the only one of his kind, right? But when he was on the show and, you know, and it is, he was like almost indecipherable when he was talking and they had an, I don't know if you remember the bit where they had, uh, they had an issue with one of their little dogs kept peeing on the rug mm-hmm. and, and Sharon wanted to hire, you know, a, you know, $300 per hour pet psychiatrist who'd come and assess why the dog was peeing on the rug and I don't know what the dog's name was, Cookie or something. And uh, and Ozzy's was, argument was that, you know, the dog's not getting out early enough in the morning. And it was like, you know, you know, Ozzy, I'm so worried about Cookie. He's, he's, he's pissing on the rug, and I'm sure there's something psychologically disturbing him. And then Ozzy comes back, and he's like, Sharon, Sharon, it's nothing, it's nothing. You don't have to pay $700 an hour, Sharon. You just need to get up at 7 in the morning and open the fucking door. <laughs> <laughs> he's a funny dude. You just need to open the fucking door, Sharon, you know? <laughs> That's good shit. And he would tack her name up. And and also, someone pointed out to me that when he walks, and I don't know, maybe this is due to injuries over the years on stage, I don't know, but he kind of walks like Captain Caveman. Yeah, Remember yeah. Remember Captain Caveman? That's how he walked he over to of- me in that story, <laughs> and I loved it because that's his signature walk. That's like that trudging Captain Caveman sort of dragging the club mm-hmm. behind him, you know. I will say, and, uh, in his defense, I will say, he's super sharp. He, oh, yeah. The way yeah. that they cut that show is obviously for entertainment reasons, you know, and right. uh, and there's a lot of things that I'm sure he said that were fine, yeah. and they didn't use those takes. <laughs> they used one as moment because it makes him more endearing, but 
He's a fucking smart guy. Especially because he liked me in the... Uh, <laughs> you know. How's Good Jack taste in doing? Huh? Uh, you said you're friends with Jack. How's he doing? Doesn't he, he got diagnosed with Thank MS or something, yeah, he's, right? Yeah, he's doing great. He's yeah, doing great. he's fine? Yeah. He, they, him and Ozzy just did that on the road or whatever show where they go oh, to different like cities. Road, yeah, yeah. It's fucking... It's actually entertaining. It's great. Yeah, no, he's doing great. I, just, I haven't seen him in a bunch of months, but... He was doing great last time I saw him. Do we have and one more call to wrap up with? Yeah, and thanks for the quick. call, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Hello, you're on with Dark Matter. Who's this? All right, that's it. Cool. We're done. There's one more. Or oh, you, shit. You're done? All right, go ahead. Hello, you're on uh, with Dark Matter. Who's this? All right, we're yeah, done. <laughs> uh, very exciting. Next week, we have uh, one of my heroes from when I was a kid. We have Al Jurgensen from Ministry coming in. Amazing. Which is fucking awesome. That's Which, great, and it sucks. I'm not going to be here. Oh, that's right. Where are you going to be? It's my daughter's birthday. We have a whole dinner thing. Uh, I'm just not going to make it. Cunt daughter. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I would bring her. Let her meet Uncle Al. Yeah. I, maybe you know, the funniest thing is, is she knew who the guest was tonight, and she knows who we, who she is. She was like, can I come? I'm like, you're oh, at school tomorrow. No. Yeah. For her birthday, if she was, if she was a ministry fan, I would let her come. But, yeah. I'm excited for that one. Yeah. So, uh. Thank you, Alvira. Thank you, you guys. Thank you one. to you as well. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Todd. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Dave. And we will uh, see you next week. Bye.